On today's part of my take, we have a very special guest, Chris Berman, in studio, the Schwam. It's a Super Bowl tradition. Every single Super Bowl week, we have the Schwam on. This is the three years running. We also have an even more special guest. Jerry O'Connell is sitting in Hank's seat to start the show. So how it's going to work is JOC is here in place of Hank. Uh, some may say he Wally Pip ever heard of him. Mm. Jerry Jerry O'Connell might take Hank's spot. Way to compete, Hank. He's going to do hot seat, cool throne with us. Then we're going to get to 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 Chris Berman, and after the show, we'll have Hank on to recap his night of comedy. So you'll get it all in the entire episode. And we're brought to you by our friends at Supercuts. Want a free haircut after this year's big game? If the big game's final score meets or beats seventy five points. You could win a free haircut at Supercuts. Why 75? Because Supercuts has been cutting America's hair since 1975, and 75 just so happens to be the highest ever score of the big game. So we're looking for the over on the Supercuts high score of 75 points. Head to supercutshighscore.com to register, read the terms and conditions, and for eligibility, that's supercutshighscore.com to register today. Supercutshighscore.com. Go right now. Supercuts, I got my hair cut on Saturday. I look great. My, my beard trimmed. Everything was Supercuts, so we're rooting for 75 points or more. Uh, and then you can get a free haircut from Supercuts. So go to supercutshighscore.com to register, read the terms and conditions, and for eligibility, that's supercutshighscore.com to register today. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Wednesday, February 7th. And Hank, you look different. <clears throat> yeah, um, you know, I'm just uh, working. Let me try some of my material. <clears throat> uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, climate change. Climate change who? Uh, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not real, so I'm not really here. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Jerry O'Connell, by the way. So oh, no, no, it's still Hank. Uh, it's still yeah. Hank. Uh, Hank, knock, what, do you, what do you think about your Patriots offseason? Um... You know, uh, I think uh, it was good to hire um, uh, Coach Mayo in internally. I think that's going to be good. Um, don't know what we're going to do in the QB position. I think uh, Mac Jones is a little, a little bitch. <laughs> hey, what's the deal? With, what is the deal? With, just tell me the background of Mac Jones. Is he a? Because uh, he seems to me to be a really wealthy kid. Is he one of these wealthy? Was McCorkle? Is that what it is? His name? McCorkle? Is that his name? His name's McCorkle. Yeah. His, so his name is not Mac Jones. His no. name is, is his middle name McCorkle? I think his first name is McCorkle. I'm looking it up Michael right now. Michael McCorkle Mac Jones. Because yeah. he just, and I, I'm sorry to get right into it about the Patriots, but I do want to say <clears throat> the NFL is better when the Patriots are losing. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> like, think about this. I'm not kidding. Think about this season and how exciting it's been, how many ups and downs, especially in the AFC the Broncos were in it for a second. The Texans were in it for a second. Yeah. Uh, Jacksonville looked good. Uh, I, I mean, there uh, was there was a lot of teams in play. And when the Patriots aren't in play, it's just more fun. It's wide yeah. open. It's just wide open. But Matt well, Jones... Well, it's not really because it's the Chiefs. Uh, I, I thought for a second the Chiefs weren't going to make it. Yeah. I think I... I mean, I listened to... You all religiously, I think you would all agree with me. Yeah, they flipped the switch, though. We I mean, might have steered you wrong on that. Oh man, I put a couple futures on the Jaguars. I didn't put them on the Broncos. I almost did when they went through their little run. I mean, of course, I had. Uh, I was. I, I. I seem to bet with this podcast for some. Mm, that's never that's a good, not idea. A good idea. Yeah. reason. Yeah, we're the never poster boys for you gamble bet, responsibly. Well, betting is so funny because when you hear people talking about something, it just gets in your head. <laughs> Uh -huh. yes. You're like that was a good point. Yeah, it's so funny. These I, guys know what they're talking about. Jerry, I love your jacket. It's it's Thank awesome. You. I love any sort of like Super Bowl or NFL theme merchandise. Yeah, it looks awesome. I think you just got it because I think they sold that downstairs. I, I did. I just got it. Um, I actually uh, I've, I've been in Vegas now for a couple days. Um, I actually hit it big in uh, Kino. I was Whoa. wearing Kino, had a huge score, 
How and much? I, I mean, a lot of money. Um, but not only did I buy this, um, let me show you the back of this jacket too if you're watching on YouTube. Okay. Uh, you don't get to hear a little rumble. Um, yeah. Wow. That's nice. But you just then, wanted to show off your ass. No, I didn't only stop there. If you look at my pants, I actually like bought a lot of clothes. I had so much money. Look at who makes these pants, Big Cat. Oh, who who makes these pants? That's the Bellagio makes those you got, pants. You got hotel pants. The Bellagio <laughs> makes those pants. He's getting up up close. So for people who are like, hey, why is Jerry sitting in Hank's seat? This show, we have the Schwam as the interview, Chris Berman. Hank is getting ready. Hank has been a diva all day. He's basically been like, don't talk to me. I don't want to do anything. Uh, so That's just normal Hank, though. Yeah, he's getting ready for his show. So we figured our good friend Jerry O'Connell will sit in Hank's seat for the start of the show. At the end of the show, we'll talk to Hank about how the comedy night went. But we have JOC. Uh, you have your briefcase. Should I ask what's in the briefcase this time? Oh, yeah. I, I brought my briefcase. Um, you guys were um, kind enough to allow me to uh, manage your... High stakes fantasy team. How'd that go? Terrible job. How'd that go, Jerry? Darren you know, Waller, no matter what. We, we, we never uh, circled year. back on that. Um, got we had a quiet. terrible year, and I wanted to take this time with you to um, tell you some things I learned from this season, and okay. maybe you could find it in your hearts to allow me to manage your team again. You don't have to give an answer today. Uh huh. Um, but uh, just open the briefcase. Okay. It's like um, a Quentin Tarantino movie. Oh, he's got sheets. Yeah, I made some. Oh. Uh, Oh, he also, Jerry, did napkin? give me an Excedrin that was wrapped in a napkin. <laughs> uh, toilet paper, actually. Toilet paper, yeah. So that was that's um, just true friendship, right? There. Yeah. Are you well, sure that actually, was an Excedrin? Yeah. That it looks like you're you're ha like you're a mule. How many Hog notes do you drugs. have? Cut with a little. You uh, have way too many. Notes. Cut with a little fentanyl. No, I'll I'll I'll, I'll make it fast. I realize. Um, <laughs> I realize. Wait, um, hold on, hold on. Let me see this one thing. Okay. Patriots none ever. Mac Jones seems like such a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> NFL is better when the Patriots lose. It's yep. more exciting, way more story. So you already did the Patriots. I, I already did my Patriots <laughs> bit. Um, I, you know what? I'm just going to give you some po things I, I learned thoughts. this okay. season. Yeah, yeah. Right, Jerry O'Connell's recap. This is a good Jerry NFL recap. Jerry O'Connell's 2023 season recap. So um, let's start with the the AFC East, Okay. Um, which was such an exciting division. I When I came on your show in August, I told, um, I said, don't, draft any dolphins yeah at all how'd that work well that that was a mistake because um fantasy you basically score points from offense yeah their fact. offense was uh uh as incredible incredible as i've seen in my lifetime did, actually yeah. did um, the running back score any touchdowns this year uh i believe um uh I, I believe Mostert led the league i think he had something like 21 yeah. touchdowns yeah. so that was a mistake mm -hmm. um I think I specifically said stay away from Mostert. Um, <laughs> that was a mistake. Um, mm -hmm. So I've actually changed my tune. Um, all all the Dolphins okay, uh, okay. next season. If okay. I were to be your manager, all the Dolphins. Um, what do you mean if you are? I, you have a lifetime contract. Uh, 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 let's make him earn it back. No, I, you know I'm going to no, give you a lifetime contract. You know what? I'm, I'm going to fire you right now, Jerry. And getting your job back is right. contingent on how this goes. Oh, I've not, this is what it feels like to be Coach Sirianni. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Max. Um, <laughs> oh, I have a question. Is Coach McDaniels annoying? Yes. Josh McDaniels? Uh, no, uh, McDaniel. Mike McDaniel. Michael, yeah. Michael, Michael McDaniel. McDaniel. Not Michael. annoying. No. I, I don't think he's annoying. No, no. not annoying. You if they don't win next year, yes, annoying. Hmm. You don't think the pa the, the the pants the 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 culotte pants are like a little like you're wearing Bellagio pants. That's I true. don't think you can judge the sunglasses all the time is a little bit much for me. Yeah, the reading glasses that you don't need. Okay. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> Bills, the Buffalo Bills were staying um, in the AFC East. All of them. Yep. Okay. Every yep. single one of them. Uh, Stephon Cook. Diggs. Is this your preview and your post? Well, no. This is what I'm going to do if you do choose. Okay. Me all right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So what happens um, in August when you come back? Is yeah. Also I'm, I'm going to have preview? some revisions. Um, okay. If, all right, all right. If I make it back, uh, the Jets. Absolutely none of them. It's a Good cursed Good franchise Good ever call. again. Not even Brees Hall because uh, Memes knows Izzy's going to vulture all yeah. those mm -hmm. all those touches. Point. Uh, Pats, none of them. Um, Mac Jones is highly annoying. Um, I, I, I just can't draft any. Let, let's move on to the AFC West. I, I can't draft any Chiefs. I just can't do it. Yeah. I, I they, and I think it's it's funny. It, um, Jake actually brought this up um, in his like good natured annoying way, mm -hmm. where he said that like dynasties are good for the business. Yeah. You know, and that, that was really, annoying of him. 
it, it made me think like um, he was talking about how the Patriots helped basically built Barstool, you know, but they're so annoying. Those dynasties. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. If they're not yours. Yeah. If they're yours, then there's they nothing rock. better. Yeah. So you yeah. just got to find a dynasty that's your own. Yeah, I guess I, I just I've never experienced that kind of winning in my life. I, I mean, you married a supermodel. Well, I know, but it's well, still. I don't know if you've seen, but they're on the rocks. <laughs> no, we're not on the rocks. That's well, a joke. I, mean, I saw a report that said that you guys are on the rocks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, we're c constantly fighting with each other, but we're like, no lawyers are have been called. Okay, like, all right, good. I'm I just. Mean, I see the reports. Isn't every marriage on the rocks? I yeah, mean, it's true. <laughs> it's built on the rocks. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, like we're here in Vegas, we're walking around. There's a huge convention. Every female convention person yeah. that you walk past like stares at you with those hungry eyes. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't tell room, and they're like wearing a lanyard, and like you have to keep walking because. I've seen the way women react yeah. around you, Jerry. Yeah, they love you. <laughs> they love. They them. love Jerry. Um. <laughs> I don't like the Chiefs. Um, they bother me. Um, I, I don't want to say anything negative about Taylor Swift, but that um, that just it, 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 it's unfair that um, Taylor Swift was basically introduced to the NFL this year. Yeah, and she's already in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. In the Super Bowl. It's like that. It's just like 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 these people need to know life doesn't work that yeah, way. She yeah, she should have dated someone on like yeah the Panthers. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Panthers. Yeah, uh, uh, go to Bank. Of, I want to see her at Bank of America Stadium week sixteen. That's a fact. Yeah, like You're right making the heart sign to uh, someone. Like I mean, Adam like feeling. I want to see David Tepper yeah. pouring a drink on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, Broncos, AFC West. Who is going to be their quarterback next season? James Winston. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Interview. Maybe really Russ. good. Great interview. Good stuff. A little long at times, but man, really, uh, really good. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> that guy, uh, wow, that guy can spin a yarn. He can yeah, talk, yeah. He can. Good stuff, though. Really good stuff. Uh, that was uh, that was a good one. Uh, none of the Raiders. Okay. Uh, you know, the Raiders are like a talent, like vacuum. Like they've ruined Devontae. They've ruined uh, Josh Jacobs. Uh, I, look, I, I love a lot of O'Connells in the league now. Love that. My last name is O'Connell. Um, but um, they're like a talent sponge. Um, none of the Chargers, AFC West. Mm -hmm. Harbaugh. I just don't see it happening. It's like, it's like buying a dilapidated Victorian home. It's like not going to be inhabitable for oh, he's hard years. But you're, you're a Chargers fan. I, I am. And I am a Chargers fan because there's, I don't mean any, uh, uh, I don't mean to offend any Chargers fans, but it's like so easy to get tickets there. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the parking's way easier. There's yeah. no way to, yeah. you can wait the whole game and get right out of that parking lot. It's like pretty easy. Um, but uh, not yet, Chargers. Um, AFC. A significant thing happened last season, and you guys didn't really talk about it. You talked about it a little bit. I I'm I'm big on the Bengals. I, I like them. I love their offense. I love Joe Burrow. I love Joe Mixon. I talked about everybody here. Um, that withholding of the information about the hand thing. Mm. I actually mm. bet that game, mm. and I love a money line. I love a close money line bet because you get some odds, and you're not looking at points. And that to me is like I try to bet singularly. You know, I think that's the way you win money is that you don't have an exotic, is that you have one bet and a, a, a like if someone's uh, an underdog by three points, that money line bet that's my jam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I took the Bengals that week thinking oh well he's not on the injury report i know he wore that cast and he was photographed with the cat with the with the tape on it on his thumb but it's nothing because it's not on the report like we're now in an age where everyone is gambling it's it's legal it's no longer done with a bookie you know it's it, this is like money that man needs to be on that injury mm -hmm. re report, and there, I'm sorry to say there needs to be repercussions. And I, I'm I'm done with the Bengals. Take that's the Washington. repercussion. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's the repercussion. You're Jerry, done with that. Jerry will no longer draft their players onto his fantasy yeah. team. Yeah, the worst fate you could have. <laughs> yeah. Um, AFC South Jaguars. I'm all in on the Jaguars. Okay. All in. May I ask why? I don't know. I just have <laughs> a feeling they're gonna. 
you know, like the first time I came on your show, I told you I had a thing for the Jags and just, I think they're going to move to London. I, I just can't wait for English people to be like, Nigel, did you hear? The Jaguars are coming. <laughs> ah, storied history of the Jaguars. <laughs> uh, Fred, Frederick Taylor like and it. Marcus Brunel. The great Maurice Jones Drew. Sir Maurice Jones Drew. Uh, Blake Bottles. Right. Or will they remain the Jaguars or will they become like the Beef Eaters or something? Beef Eaters yeah. would be good. Or the Beans. Red Coats. Beans. Yeah. Red Coats. The Inbred Monarchs. <clears throat> yeah. Colts, AFC South. I love the Colts, all of them. Mm -hmm. Anthony Richardson's got to protect himself, but um, love him. Love Michael Pittman. Yeah, Jim Irsay's okay. He's on the mend right now. Yeah. He, he tweeted a second Good. ago. He's back. Good. Um, shout out to his mama. Um, Texans, <laughs> all the Texans, except okay. uh, that one-two punch of uh, Singletary Pierce isn't doing it for me. <laughs> one-two knockout punch. Um, but all the man, Collins, Tank. Man, what a team. Um, Eagles, Max, you ready? All of them, Max. Every single All one of them. All of them. them. Yeah. We're, you are so back. back. So fun to watch. Um, How do you feel about Brazil, Max? The birds are open in the season in Brazil. Uh, I like that they're opening the season because that's just like kind of an exciting thing. I don't like that it is counting as a home game. Mm. Yeah. That sucks. One less game at the link. Yeah. Max, you should. I mean, you should make a trip down there. I, uh, I don't know no, if the no, airplane. No, no, Jerry, could, we could we could we could work on that. But think about how many farts that is on an airplane. A no, lot of farts on an airplane. And think about all the TFing we're going to be doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. You all might that. do some BFing in Brazil. Yeah. Is that butt? Just with the cheeks. Yeah. Just the cheeks, though. Like hot dog in the buns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, by the way, they're, uh, I don't mean to generalize and stereotype, but they're known for their uh, asses. Yeah. And that's like a lot of BFing. There's mm -hmm. a lot of BFing going on down God, that there. That would be so fun. I wonder if Max would never actually like want to insert back there if he'd just be like, <laughs> I just want to. I want the friction from the rubbing on your butt, and then like a Brazilian person would be like, "Put it in place, Max. Now put it in." And Max would be like, "No, no, no, baby. I want the friction. This is what I want. No, no, no. This is what. This is my thing. You know, this is my thing. I want the friction on the butt nut. Please, Max. Please put it in." Put it in now. Oh, I want you inside of me. No, 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 no. I'm not going inside. Stop saying that. Shut up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's basically it. That's basically uh, it. That's exactly Friday right. night too. Yeah, yeah. I Friday don't know. Night. Go, go. This is okay. I, I'm going to stand up for uh, for high school football here. I feel like this is encroaching on their territory, right? Friday night. That's when the kids play. Well, that's what they did when they did the Jets Dolphins game on Black Friday. They basically were like, "Hey, this is coming." Yeah, that's fuck what they high do. school. They take huh? every day. Yeah, Fridays are weird. Also, you have to be careful, and I know as your former fantasy manager, you've got to set lineups for those Friday games. Yep. You yep. forget about them, yep. and then they get locked in, and you're uh, you're stuck with someone um, that you don't want, Brandon Cooks or something. Um, Jerry, as part of our review process for how the season went, um, what was our final record? It wasn't good. I stopped watching. I'm so sorry. My name is my name, mm -hmm. Okay. But I let you down this yeah, season. big time. Um, big time. And um, the only thing to do is to get back up and start working again. And that's going to take us to the NFC East. Uh, Cowboys, Cowboys need a second receiver. You know, I don't mind. I, I don't mind Dak Prescott. I, I don't mind the Cowboys. Tony Pollard was non-existent. I think I told uh, all the AWLs to draft him. I'm sorry. Yeah, he sucked. He sucked. Why? Why did he suck? Just when you're when you're the backup, you get those carries after everyone does the hard yards, and then you, you have actually that burst. You actually said that. Yeah, I remember you and saying it's like, that. Ah, maybe we don't want him to be the featured back. He also yeah. had that knee injury that probably slowed him down a little bit. Yeah, it was a bummer of a season for them. Um, I mean, I'm sitting in Hank's chair, so I feel like I got to defend them. Yeah. Great defense, though. I am going to talk about Tiffany Gomez in a second. <laughs> I'm going to save that, though, because I need to collect my thoughts. Uh, Giants, I want to apologize again to the AWLs. I told them to waste their fourth-round pick on Darren Waller, Darren Waller, and that was an error. Bad. Darren Waller, no matter what. Bad. Yep. <laughs> Very when bad. did you realize you fucked that up? Was it week one? Week uh, About halfway through week one. Yeah. yeah. Bad. bad. That was a real error. And then wow. I bet when DeVito got in, you were like, well... 
Maybe there's going to be connection there. Maybe this yeah, is good. It was a fun story until it wasn't, until everything came back down to earth. That was a good interview. Love that interview. That yeah. was really good. Sean Stellato. Um, the Commanders. Yeah. What's going to happen with them? Oh, we're going to be great in like two years. Two years. This Sweet. year, we're going to get a quarterback. Which one? We got Cliff. I don't know, any of the three. Any of the top three, I'm fine. Interesting. Yeah. What happens to Hal? Who I didn't mind. Uh, Hal, I Hal is probably going to be a great backup. Probably one of the best backups. We got actually we're cornering the Mac, the the backup market. We've got Sam Hal and we got Jacoby Brissett. Hmm. I think we're set. Okay. I didn't mind them. I I, I didn't mind them early in the season. Yep. Um, Until like week four, like really early in the season. Just need to see if you guys rehire me. I just need to see what's going to happen. Um, NFC West. I, I, why am I so, why do the 49ers bore me so much? Why are they that so makes no boring? Sense. Yeah. I don't, it, I, it doesn't make sense. No, sen- no, it makes no sense. They're fun. They really are? Yeah. yeah. They, do you like, you don't like running the football? It's just like, what do you want? Like 20 points from all your player starters every week? Is that what you want? Yeah, I don't know. I'm it. so bored. Hey, you know what? By the way, there's another, I, I don't want to make this about uh, celebrity uh, football couples, but. There's a pretty famous football couple on the 49ers, you know, um, Olivia Culpo, beautiful yeah, woman, mm-hmm, and Christian McCaffrey, arguably the best player in the league, the best player in the league. Um, like nobody talks about, like nobody really yeah, talks that? about them. Where's like the they're, I'm that? telling you, there's a boredom that happens with the 49ers. And I know I've talked about the guy I work with who always gets in my face and he's, he's just a volatile man. He's just a tattooed volatile man who just always says to me like, and the Niners just had one of those seasons this year. He's always like, yeah, you like the Niners, right? Mm-hmm. They like that. Again, <laughs> just steamrolling. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, the the Packers didn't even put a scare into us. Like, we just, for a second there, I thought, but look at us. The Niners punch you in the mouth football. It's just so, I'm, they, I, I can't draft them. They're too boring. It's 20 points every week. 20 points every week. That's yeah, so really <laughs> that good. Sucks. That's, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um. Oh. Um, let's talk about the Seahawks. Um, is Penix going to be their quarterback? Oh, that'd be cool. Are you thinking just because he went to Washington? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and isn't there? That uh, makes sense. Uh, oh, 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 hold on a second. Uh, um, you guys are no better than I do because you have fast internet. But um, who's the new Seahawks offensive Mike coordinator? McDon- oh, uh, I think it is someone from the Washington Huskies. Please look it up, Jake. Jake. Well, they just hired Steve Belichick as, as the defensive, defensive coordinator. coordinator. Yes. Offensive coordinator, Jake. Waiting on Jake, 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 do, 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 come on, Jake, do, 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 do. Can't get it. Fucking Jake. This is sad. What? You're killing me, man. You're fucking killing me, Jake. They might be, they might be doing interviews, because he just got hired last week. Okay. Maybe they're doing interviews. Um, uh, I don't think they've hired anyone yet. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, okay. I'm yeah. sorry, Jake. I apologize. Okay. I, I apologize for really not quick. getting that Don't info. apologize. Okay. Like, I I did you wrong. Like, get mad. Like, say, no. say Apology I should off. Jake. Say, I had no right to do. Say that you had no right to do that, Jerry. Say it. Just get mad, Jake. You had no right to do that, Jerry. No, Jake. Mean it. You had no right to do that. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Even faker. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I love the Rams. You know why? Because they don't score twenty points every week. They like sometimes score. Like sometimes Stafford. Stafford is like forty points, and then some weeks nothing. It's so fun. The Cardinals. I, I got to tell you something. I um. I, I sometimes I'm not allowed to watch football in my house, like because um, my family's there, and they watch reality TV on Sundays. There's a show called Ninety Day Fiance that comes on on Sundays that my wife and my children watch, and so we have um one. It's like a tuner, like a like a one tuner that you have to use in our house. So I've been listening to some. NFL games this season, like on on the Sirius XM Old school, app, yeah. And it is interesting um, listening to a game. Um, and we one week um, we streamed um, Kyler Murray because uh, we had Joe Burrow, and that didn't work out well. And then I think we had to start Kyler Murray in our in our league. And I listened to a Cardinals game the entire game. I was doing like yard work. And I was really thinking to myself, I, I did, I've, I had an edible, so I was a little out of it, but I thought to myself, am I the only person in the world listening? It was like week 16, 
Am I the only person in the world listening to this Cardinals radio telecast? Yeah, probably. Yeah, you might have been. Yeah. But I want to go back. You only have you're only able to watch one show on all the TVs. It's in like your a, house? it was. It's like a um, for a second there we were um, uh, we have like a Direct TV thing, and it was we were only allowed to watch on one tuner. But we fixed that since then. Okay. One of our tuners was out. Okay. Dave Pash, voice of the Cardinals. He does ESPN too. He's really good. So you enjoyed. Yeah, no, it was his. Great. His voice sounded great. He did a great job. <laughs> yeah. But those I did... are the comments that you don't have to take from Jake. <laughs> Just so you know, <laughs> we don't care about the announcer of the Cardinals radio broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dave. Pash. Jake, don't ever fucking interrupt me again. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Just don't fucking do it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm not actually not joking. Don't interrupt me when I'm on like a roll. When I'm on a bit, like don't interrupt me, okay? If Hank is in the middle of his like comedy act today and he's like, knock knock. Knock, knock. Say it, Jake. Knock, knock. Who's there? Don't fucking interrupt me. Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Uh, oh, let me do a Hank joke. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, Epstein. Epstein who? I, w I was murdered. <laughs> that was a good joke. Great joke. Um, I like it, sorry, Jerry. Jerry. Sorry, Jerry. I'm kidding, Jake. We fucking love you. Calm down. By the way, you're making me into a mean person. I'm not a bully. You're turning me into one. Um, yeah, you did this to yourself, Jake. Yeah. Um, and the NFC South, absolutely no one. Not Good one call. player. Love that. Smartest that's that's your session. Your I'm not strongest, doing it. Strongest argument. Guys, that's it. That's my pitch. Think I about it. it. Okay. That's um, that's all I got for you. Yeah. All right. Strong me and culpa, Jerry. How how are you feeling about the Super Bowl before we do hot seat cool throne? Are you gonna you like the Chiefs or the 49ers? You know, I had a pretty terrible year betting on games this year, as I told you. Um I bet on the Bengals right before uh Joe Burrow's hand fell off. Um <laughs> Um, and I had a future on Baltimore because I listened to this podcast and you somehow fucking got into my brain. Yeah, that's my bad. Um, and I think I was really rooting against Taylor Swift. I just kept betting against Taylor Swift. I yeah. was like, you need to learn failure. Like, very talented woman, beautiful woman. Whoa. I've met her. Careful. Wonderful. Like, a, a, a presence. Like, a, a presence. Like, a, a, a force. But, like, l life life is just like a, a shit show it's just like it's just one letdown after another and shouldn't be that easy life isn't this it sh it's not that it shouldn't be this easy it isn't this easy it's a nightmare life is a nightmare and like the most traumatic thing to happen to taylor swift i guess is kanye taking saying beyonce deserved this like is that really that traumatic? It's kind of a cool story. Like if you're like, oh my gosh, Taylor, tell the time that Yay came on stage. Um, I, I just, I'm just in a bad mood. I'm okay. not, I, and I'm actually, I have no idea who's going to win this game, so I'm not going to bet on it. I'm okay. just going to watch it. Okay, gonna just stay. enjoy it. Are you going to watch? Fan. Are you allowed to watch the entire game? I think I am. Okay. I think I am. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I, I my wife, um. Former supermodel, look yep. it up. Yep, I'm gonna look, look her it up, up Jake. I'm, when I'm, I look her up, though, it says I'm, that your marriage is on the rock. It's look not. Her that's up. A okay, right. it's not true. Right. Um, m my wife doesn't like football. Doesn't like the sound of the NFL. Rebecca it, for Romaine some reason, yeah, she doesn't have the O'Connell. She only took the Stamos, um, mm. and then dropped it. <laughs> and then I, I actually took the Stamos. I'm Re <laughs> Jerry O'Connell Stamos. Jerry, Jerry O Stamos. I tried to take it. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at pictures of her. She, yeah, no, yeah, she supermodel. Yeah, but the Thank only you for time me to look her up. The only time I've really, um, I, I was watching. Oh man, I wish Hank was here. Too bad he's. Uh, uh, knock knock. Who's there? Um. Uh, J Sixers. J Sixers who? Uh, and we were just peaceful protesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the only game, uh, the only Super Bowl I really watched from beginning to end with my wife was that uh, <laughs> Patriots Falcons game, and um, it was really funny. My wife wasn't watching it. My wife was shopping online. My wife wasn't watching it, and it's so funny. In the fourth quarter, I'll, I can't believe that I was hate watching it because I wanted to see the Patriots lose, and I was, I couldn't believe what was happening. And my wife like looked up from I don't know Wayfair or whatever fucking pillow she was buying, another fucking pillow. Oh God! Let's go to Brazil, Max. Let's go. <laughs> yes, boys' trip. 
Let's go to Brazil, Max. Actually, that'd be a fun trip. Jerry and Max do Brazil. Yeah. That'd be a great trip. That'd be a great trip. Um, but um, my wife looked up and went, are the Patriots going to win this game? I, and that was like, I was like, are, are you watching this? And my wife was like, they were down 28 to three. Are they going to come back and win this game? And I, I uh, that was the last sort of like happy moment we had with each other. Uh, yeah. Sounds like she knows ball. Would she like to manage her fantasy team? <laughs> I would be open. Oh, open God, it's invite. so annoying. My, my wife is from Northern California, so, like, all the time now, she's like, bang, bang, Niner gang. <laughs> and he's only in the Bay. It's so stupid. God, that's another annoying thing about Niners fans. My wife has, like, Niners gear, and she wears it, and, like, people on the street are always like, bang, bang. Is this Fuck why you assholes. hate the Niners? Is it because it makes it makes your wife happy? It reminds him of his wife. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. I'm, I, I like my I like my significant other to be. I like everyone to be happy. I'm I'm just. I don't know. This season was a letdown. I let you down as a fantasy you owner, did, did, uh, fantasy manager. No, you job. are you're the owner. So I'm the manager. Yeah. Um. I hope you find it in your heart to, uh, you know, um, Sirianni me and. Uh, yeah, bring in some good coordinators. On. How about that? I I I tend to work by myself. I mean, that's. That's who I tend to work with. And Jake, I'm sorry I, I jumped on you like that. No, I'm sorry for interrupting. But just think about it, guys. Who's, yeah, okay. Who's sorrier between Jerry and Jake? They're both so polite. Yeah. I mean, only one of us will lose sleep about it, so. Yeah. Uh, before we get into hot seat. Jerry's face there. <laughs> before we do hot seat cool throne, there was a, a, a fun story that Jake sent to us a couple months ago about Jerry and an AWL, this podcast. Yes. So, Jerry, you, you found an AWL's dog? You saved a dog? Mm-mm. I have, um, I have, uh, man, this is going to really impress everybody here. I have five dogs. Oh, um, they're all rescues. Adopt, don't shop. Hell yes. Um, we do not feed them regular kibble. We only feed them farmer's dog, farmer's dog. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so great. They come in the bags. You open them. They love it. Yeah. They love it. Farmer's dog is just good stuff. Um, but, um, I was running uh, my two younger ones who were kind of crazy and I got to run them around and there was a beautiful golden retriever sitting by themselves in the middle of the street just sitting there in my neighborhood no leash sitting there and my dogs went crazy because it's like a you know it's like a rogue dog and like my dogs went over to this dog and they immediately became friendly and it's so funny dogs like to run in packs you know it's like it's like being an AWL. You want to get in a pack, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm running around the MGM here. We're all high-fiving each other, taking selfies and stuff. I had the briefcase down there. People wanted photos of me in the briefcase. <laughs> um, and um, I got the dog, and it's difficult having a dog without a leash, you know? So I was, like, holding this dog, and I I texted the number. on the. I, there was a number on there, and, and I texted the number, and I said, hey, I got a beautiful golden retriever here. Is this your dog? I think I sent a photo. And uh, I said, my name is Jerry O'Connell. You know, I'm in the neighborhood. Your dog's fine. Uh, I can hang out here for a little bit. And um, I immediately got a text back saying, I fucking drafted Darren Waller. In the fourth <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was very little gratitude for me oh, standing yeah. uh -huh. with a dog. And at first I was angry. Um, but again... I, I, they're right. I really like. I really led a lot. A lot of people rely on me for their fantasy. Yeah, uh -huh. facts, picks, yeah. facts. Um, you know, strategies, draft strategies, and um, you know, again, uh, much like I talked about earlier, money is involved typically, and I felt bad about that. So uh, yeah, it's just funny how my season last season as your fantasy manager is, is still following me but uh, yeah. but the dog was okay and we sort of had a laugh about it you're um, a hero um yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't know if i'm a hero no yeah. you're a hero thank you're you for your hero. service yeah, yeah, jerry i uh, know no, no. come hero. on with my billy come on you're a hero. You're a hero. <laughs> um all right let, let's let's do hot seat cool throne hot seat oh, cool throne brought to you by coors light hanging with friends and family to watch the big game is the best but as the game heats up it can get intense that's why coors light has the signature Ice cold refreshment keep you feeling chill for the big game. Stock up on Coors Light and choose chill. You might even remember an iconic beer train. 
and is known for spreading good vibes and Coors Light to those who need it. After 12 years on hiatus, Coors Light's beer train is coming out of retirement for the big game. We're going to be cracking open a Coors Light, listening to the sweet tones of Love Train. So when it's time to, for a refresh, just open a Coors Light. We love Coors Light. It's the coldest beer in the world. It's the best beer in the world. That's just a fact. There's only one beer out there that's uh, for the chillest big game, and that's Coors Light. Stock up or get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash take. All right, so Jerry, you are sitting in Hank's seat. Do you want to go first, or we can go first and then come back around to you? Yeah, yeah, you you guys go first. Okay, all right, okay. Well, we'll go. we'll start with Jake. We'll come around. All right. Jake, your hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is MetLife Stadium. Mm. Yeah. It was recently announced that the very mm. cursed stadium in the NFL world mm. will be hosting the 2026 World Cup final. Yes. Mm. However, I believe they're switching it to grass. Correct. They are. But it's still cursed. Yeah. Yes. F- FIFA is making them switch to grass. FIFA is also not calling them by the name MetLife Stadium. Ooh. It's just New York, New Jersey, which made me realize... Like we don't ever have to call these stadiums by their corporate names if no, we don't want just to. Be giant stadiums. And it's always Heinz Field. Yeah. To me, yeah. it's yeah. not. It's not Acrisure, but Agreed. yeah. Staples Center. Yeah. Crypto. Yeah. What is that even? Is crypto, crypto even a com. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. I'm surprised. Were you upset that you didn't get involved in the FTX? Is that kind of just a that's a level of your celebrity? You weren't there yet. You know, it's funny. Um, just getting back to the whole like um. Uh, waking up with fear, angry at the world thing. Um, I remember when it was all happening, I was like, man, why am I not on this level? Like, yeah. how do I, like, by the way, they were like getting paid in like owner, they were getting paid n- n- not only in like currency, in a currency. They were getting paid in like, it would be like getting paid in a banking system. Yeah. Uh, like, and I remember feeling, um, what's the word? Jealousy, envy, anger, and, um, Man, I was so happy when they all got sued. It was so <laughs> exciting. Like, yeah, pay up, Brady. Yeah. yeah. Matt Damon, <laughs> you duped us all, you know? Uh-huh. It would be like telling people to draft like Darren Waller in the fourth <laughs> round. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. people believing you. Yeah. <laughs> cut that yeah. Just cut that All right, out. your cool throne? Uh, my cool throne is Lions general manager Brad Holmes. So he had his, uh, I think it was his end of year press conference, mm-hmm. and he just roasted the media about their old takes exposed i don't know if you guys saw any of these quotes no but uh he told someone you wanted us to pick a quarterback you didn't want us to pick penny sewell i know you said that was a miss Uh, i give probably two people in this room credit for admitting they were wrong so he just lashed out i I like this i I think the media should be held accountable we're wrong you tell us enemy of the people because we're not scared to tell you that you suck yeah so you should tell us when we're wrong tell tell the media when they suck yeah yeah so like like if we're wrong Tweet at us. We're yeah. wrong. Go after mm, us. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you should do. I don't think you should do that. I just think you have to like act above. I think you have to sort of like. <laughs> no, I disagree. I, we're like also we're, it's like, we're I also mean, very bring, petty. So yeah, yeah there's a reason why we're not. GMs. But honestly, like uh, one could say that the Eagles' downfall began when someone pretty high up in their coaching organization were yelling at fans in Arrowhead Stadium, yeah, which is true. like it's petty, true. you know. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. True, but he's probably hold, holding that in in the heat of yeah, the moment at the out. podium. Like that would be a great that would be a great speech to give if they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they lost. So the like, there. yeah, you got to wait. You got to hold yeah. that one. Okay, All right, fair. PFT, your hot seat, cool throne. Uh, my hot seat is Drake. Yeah, Drake's on the hot seat. Jerry, have you seen? Um, have you seen the internet today? Uh, I have not. No. All yeah. right. So Drake, uh, international superstar, yeah. top of his game. Sure. I think most number one singles of all time. Uh, he was jacking off, mm-hmm. and a video came out. He has a penis. Out. He has. Be- I'll, ha- I'll put it this way: um, his penis won't be getting any NFL head coaching opportunities because it's too large and intimidating. Oh, wow! It's mm-hmm. oh, it's too large. <laughs> yeah, he hits, and he's got a big dick. Yeah, huge dick. God, what a bummer! It's so much better to hear like you guys were like filming a commercial and you stole glances at each other's dicks and they yeah. weren't big like yeah that's what no you hear, we're not you know? built like drake no, unfortunately no. drake i actually think my my conspiracy theory brain tells me that drake leaked this himself because it's a good angle it's like you know and he's got yeah, a big dick. and he's got a big dick yeah so if anything it like my it's respect really big, for Jerry. drake increased today it's really what big. a bummer yeah. yeah it's really big, big bummer yeah they don't make butts big enough in brazil for his dick <laughs> yeah yeah no insertion though just yeah no, just he was just just cranking it yeah hot dog in the bottom just cranking it 
Uh, my cool throne is Chinese spy pigeons. Mm. Chinese spy pigeons are on the cool throne. There was a pigeon that got, it was imprisoned. It got arrested in India. <laughs> and it was held in jail for eight months yeah. because they thought it was a Chinese spy pigeon. They, um, they saw that it had like these two metal rings on its leg and the metal rings had Chinese writing on it. And I guess the Chinese have used spy pigeons before. So they imprisoned, much like Brittany Griner, they imprisoned this pigeon uh, in India for a long mm. time. They conducted a, f a thorough review of the situation. They found out it was a Taiwanese racing pigeon, which apparently is Whoa. a thing that you can bet on, which sounds awesome. That's yeah. rules. And these pigeons can make like professional athlete salaries. Like these pigeons are some of the richest athletes in the world. And so they determined it was a racing pigeon. They released it. Now it's in a hospital recuperating from its stay in Indian prison. That rules. But it's a good story. I don't know the name. I want to find out what the name of this pigeon is. Um, but yeah, they did a deep and proper inquiry and investigation. They did not find any fact associated with spying and the pigeon. It was released last week and it is in fine health, according to the hospital. So okay. a good story with a good ending. They yeah. should have had... Uh like a, a pigeon, a prisoner exchange, like a, a pigeon yeah. exchange with like a, a war crimes yeah. pigeon. A Chinese warlord yes. gets returned warlord. from India. Yes. For, yeah. the, for the other pigeon. <laughs> yes. yeah. And then they pass each other on the tarmac. Yeah. 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 Like Bridge of Spies. Yeah. Yeah, that would rock. Um, all right. I got two hot seats. One is, uh, I guess, Cable. No, no, Cable might be on the cool throne. ESPN, Fox, and Warner Brothers are all combining. So we just have Cable again. Yeah, so into wow. another, like a... It's for sports, right? Yeah, so I guess maybe the hot seat is just us forever believing that we were going to not end up back at cable. Yeah. So let me just ask this. So Fox Sports and ESPN, are because I know they are the same company. It's Fox, Warner Brothers, and ESPN. And so is there going to be a, like, I, cause some, there's, I know there's a Fox Sports and an ESPN, but I know they're both owned by Disney. Are they going to be I don't one think the channel? Companies are merging. I think they're teaming up for like an app for, for a streaming service. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I don't know. It's stupid. Uh, just let me watch all the sports. I don't care. Yeah. Stop, it's, stop with those shit. Just tell me where to watch. ESPN, Warner Brothers, and Fox are launching a new sports streaming service, combining each company's sports rights. Yeah. Which I like for one reason though, uh, because going back and forth between ESPN and Fox Sports on your phone or tablet on a college football Saturday, yeah, sucks. Yeah, it sucks ass, right. so I'm, I'm very glad about this. Um, all right, then my other hot seat, PFT alluded to it, Mike Vrabel for being too big. Uh, incredible Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, Diana Rossini, who only reports facts. Yep, Scoops uh, Rossini is what they're calling her. Yep, she said that she had a GM at the Senior Bowl who mentioned to me Vrabel's physical build, that he's a very large human being and can be very intimidating to people in an organization that are gonna be part of these decisions, and that is a factor. It's always, I mean, you have to understand if you're a football owner, large human beings, you don't want to be around them. No. they Will they be able to communicate effectively with other large human beings? Yeah. You want a nerd. Yeah. You want a tiny little nerd. I do like the idea, though, of owners just being intimidated by big people. Yeah. Just Here like, you know, I don't want to deal with this guy. He could kick my ass. Yeah. Variable is, he is a large human being. And mm. then my cool throne is Andy Reid, who is not going to retire. Wow. He had it's noted a, small guy, successful small football guy, yeah. coach, Andy Reid. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, they did a, a big article about him on ESPN where he, it was all just football guy quotes where he said uh, he'll spend a couple hours a day on football, whether he's watching video or drawing up plays for possible inclusion in the playbook. He said, I enjoy doing that. Some people read novels. I look at plays. Uh, they interviewed Dave Tobe, uh, special teams coach. He said football is his hobby. This is all he does. I'm trying to get Andy to play golf. I'm trying to get him to go hunting. He just won't do it. Andy Reid also has a bucket list that he won't reveal, but he said there are things you you want to do. I try to chip away at them. There's nothing huge. I went went to Italy last summer. Good eating. I ate my way from <laughs> uh -huh. the north to the south. And then Patrick Mahomes said, other than spending time with his grandkids, he doesn't do any of that stuff. He's all about football and cheeseburgers. I, I have to get my hands on this bucket list from yeah. Andy Reid. I got to know it's what's on It's just eating that. in different countries. Yeah, eating my way through different like, countries. Oh, I went to this country. I'm going to eat some more. My prediction, they win the Super Bowl. He probably goes to France. Yeah. <laughs> Eats his way through France. Eats his way through France. All right, Jerry, finish us off. Hot seat, cool throne. Hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is Hank, okay. who tonight is doing comedy. And I want to say um, I've really been thinking about him. He's been in my thoughts. and um, I me as well? Well, I know that Hank went and did the comedy store or something in Chicago. Laugh right? Factory, Factory, yeah. Laugh Factory, sorry. Um, I know those, those are two different teams. Yeah, two um, four. Um, and I really hope that he, like, because he could go up and he could be quite effective if he tells 
his story of Barstool. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I think that's what he's going to do. Because that, to me, is what we want to hear. Uh, by the way, I, I already got the pay per view. I'm already getting it. Jake, give it a plug. Barstool.tv slash PPV. Well, this um, is coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can still, um, watch, you can still you buy can still it. Buy yeah, it. yeah. Watch you can it. still get it. Look, there's yeah. no linear viewing anymore, um, or whatever they call it. Um, <laughs> I know you're talking about the ESPN Fox Sports app, but whatever. Um, I, I, I hope he just tells his story. Yeah, Fucking Max with the yawn when I'm talking. Yeah, I know. who the are fuck you are boring you, Max? You're, you're disrespectful. boring. Disrespectful. The there's, fuck! There's, there's a huge, a loud on. yawn. I'd rather you farting in fucking 33B <laughs> no, on a that flight over. Max, what you, the fuck? Max, were you worried that your behavior on a plane was so so abhorrent that Hank was going to come put a hole in your wall? <laughs> um, no. Follow along. I was not worried about that. Yep. Yeah, no, get, okay. It. Now it got it. Took it. A now got while it. For me Delayed to, onset. Yeah. Yep, yep. Now I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Max, I'm a fucking guest, and you yawn know, loudly in the middle of me telling my hot seat. And now what he did was he passed it to me. I'm about to yawn. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, who are you, Hank? Um, and my cool throne is um Hank. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I have such an intense attraction to Tiffany Gomez. <laughs> it is. It's actually. I am. I'm obsessed with her. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed, and I'm going to tell you why. I've thought about it. I, you know, I follow her on social media, and I even I don't slip into DMs. I'm not. That's a, a very that's a very non horny way of saying I follow her on Instagram. By mm -hmm. the way, follow her on Instagram, but I <laughs> yeah. even like leave comments like, "Looking good, girl." URL like G U R L like, go Mavs. I'm not even a Mavs fan. She's like always in a jersey. She's always going to sporting events. She's beautiful. Her hair is perfect. I think the thing I'm most attracted to is that there's a real a mental issue there that mm. I don't know if it's drug induced. I, I like those people are fucking real. I see those people. I, I'm like Hank put a hole in her wall. And yeah. if I did that in my house, if I went up to a wall in my house and ran my knee in there, I'm, but I'm not allowed to put a, a a cup of water on a table without using a coaster. If there's a water ring there, I'm not having sex for for years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I mean, years. If I uh, if I like wear a pair of shoes in the house and there's like a speck of dirt on them, I, I, like I'm, I, I'm not touching my wife. Like touching her for years. And here's a woman who is going to de Cowboys games and Hank is kicking holes in her wall and he spent not only the weekend there I, I, he was there till Tuesday Wednesday yeah couldn't couldn't fly back I, I'm really I, I gotta give it to Hank that's it's good work I'm re it really is good work really I'm really work. attracted to her look I don't want <laughs> Tiffany don't at me I don't want any communication please no no communication right no DMs nothing please Please respect I don't want to go down that road can't have a trace of that yeah but I'm obs like I'm uh, Hank is in my cool throne for just being in the presence of the most beautiful woman in the world <laughs> <laughs> Jerry I just added you to the list yeah no, bonk list yeah list. <laughs> yeah. Have you, you're on the bonk list <laughs> have you closed your eyes and thought about them jerry um be honest i i, I you you know I, I i want answers i i don't want to get like into like I, honestly i've thought more about M max <laughs> tf and and now bf and that's an image yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's an image. Like I haven't. Like I, I don't have an image of uh, of a Hank and Tiffany okay, Gomez. Okay, that's good. Gomez. 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 You got it right. Yeah. Gomez. Yeah. Well, Jerry, thank you as always. Oh man, you are the best. We love you so much. No rollback question. Uh, no. We already oh. did it with Boomer. Oh. Oh. Okay. Do you want one? Well, I mean, I just um, I just wrote a couple things down. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if Into I, the I clip. just go through. It's not a R H O B A C K A. Yeah, yeah. How do you spell it? Whatever. How it's B A C K. <clears throat> um, sometimes I write a little poem. I know I let everybody down this season with my fantasy managing. Think about it, guys. Think about it. Um, but I wrote a little poem. I like to pick someone out on the staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just write um, just a few words for them. And um, this episode, I chose uh, Max. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is a poem for Max. Okay. Okay. Love it. 
Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. To the man with the beautiful beard and also the beautiful hair, Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. To the man who is really, really good at keeping a balloon up in the air. Mm -hmm. mm. Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. To our friend who is always entertaining and as for punishments, you are a glutton. Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. Our friend whose career-defining moment was forgetting to hit the recording button. Ooh. Way to go. <laughs> Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. Your work here, pardon my take, is nothing short of genius. Maxi, 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 whether it's helping the boys with edits or telling them to steal glances at Big Cat's micro penis. <laughs> <laughs> Maxi, 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 your team won a lot of games. Your QB threw a lot of darts. Maxi, 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 asking for a friend, what is the monthly fee for subscribing to Only Farts? <laughs> Maxi, 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 when defending your Philly fandom, never do you ever refrain. Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. Your vocabulary is verbose, even though the only book you've ever read was Girl on a Train. <laughs> That's a good book. Uh, that was a good like one. Maxi, 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 hearing about your titty fucking prowess <laughs> never ever fails. Whether you're titty fucking in overalls or titty fucking in pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> titty fucking with Stroud, titty fucking with Goff, titty fucking with DeVito, titty fucking with the Barstool Sports Store that has 20% off. <laughs> Titty fucking on the streams, titty fucking on the show, titty fucking on Viva La Stool, titty fucking with an infected toe. Ooh, yeah. Titty fucking in the summer, titty fucking in the fall, titty fucking in the spring, titty fucking little you small. <laughs> titty fucking with the Kelsies, titty fucking with Tay Tay, titty fucking with Mahomes, titty fucking little boy ass. <laughs> Maxi, Maxi, Maxi is the king of titty fucking. It all must just go to your head. Titty fucking, titty fucking, titty fucking, titty fucking, titty fucking your ex's best friend right in her own bed. <laughs> Maxi, 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 you put up with so much like having to find a sink where Big Cat can go poo poo. Maxi, 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 having to sit through everyone's takes and Jake doing that stupid do do do. <laughs> do it. Do, 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 do. I hate it. I fucking hate it. <laughs> but Maxi, 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 we love you on the show. You're the best. You're the man. You are the bomb. Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. We love our angry little Philly fan. But remember to watch your mouth or you'll get a text from the mom. <laughs> Max wow. Delenthe, everybody. Good job, Max. It. Good job, Jerry. Incredible, Jerry. We love you that so much. You're such a great part of this show. So thank you for stopping by. Thank you for wearing that jacket. Thank you for being you. We love you. We love you. All right, let's 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 kick it to the strong. Okay, we now welcome on a very, very, very special guest. It is a Super Bowl week tradition, which is actually my favorite thing that this has become a tradition. It's third year in a row. We have the Schwam, Chris Berman, in our studio this time. I love it. We're not in we're not in a hotel in Southbury, which, by the way, you were the, the most gracious host the last two years, but we wanted to host you this year. So the Schwam is here. Uh, I mean, it's it really is a dream for PFT and I to have you be a Super Bowl, you know, every single year tradition having you on this show. Well, a I've, it's nice to be back. It's nice to be in the house, that, not the house that Ruth built, mm -hmm. but the house that part of my take. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll yes. tell you an amazing it, yeah. complex. Yeah. And you fed me lunch. Now you now you're gonna get the better side of me. Yeah, um, it is nice. I and I'm proud of you guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thanks for being fans of football. I've told you this every time. And somehow along the line, you, you you enjoy the way we give you football. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Big Cat's right. The the secret genius thing that we did at the start was we all got COVID, so we couldn't interview you the first time we wanted to. So then we had to reschedule making you a Super Bowl week guest and then doing it two years in a row. Now it's like we, you have to do this yeah. every single year. We oh, got I see. You into this is it. a binding. It's a binding. Oh, yeah. Offer I can't refuse. Oh, no, it's yeah. an offer you <laughs> can't <laughs> refuse. Yeah. So here's the thing. I know it's not going to run till, we're, but the day we're taping it, of course, remember we had this last year. Yes. It's the second. Which is Groundhog's Day, which is do 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 day. It is do 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 day. We had to bring that back. Yes, right? uh -huh. of course. <laughs> it's do 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 day. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't we do it today? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. He's, he he didn't see his shadow, right? So we're getting early spring. Oh yeah, that's that's. You know what? Was there a book on that? I don't know. There was. Yeah, a book. I'm sure you could bet. Well, on the, it. the north, it, half the country hasn't seen the sun in in ten days. Anyway. That's right. That was an easy. That was an easy under. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what we got to do? We got to go back and look throughout history. When the groundhog 
does not see a shadow is that good for the underdog in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, There's correlate. There's got to be a correlation there. Yeah. We'll have our best guys look it up. We can you know find what? that. They used to have this. Remember, it took it not till recently that it would be after Groundhog's Day. So yeah. You have to go that far back. That's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Easy research. Yes, yeah. easy research. So, uh, the Schwam, you're here. We want to talk Super Bowl. We want to talk everything. So let's let's start with Super Bowl. I was rooting so hard for the Schwami Super Bowl. We were yet again like I thought the Bills. We were believers. You have the Niners there, but it was you know it, we 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 come that close again. But Chiefs Niners, initial thoughts. Well, um, I looked at going into the season before anybody played a game. They were two of the three favorites, mm-hmm. if you will, right? So the fact that however they got there, we'll start with the Niners. The fact that they're there is not a surprise. Now we can get into them a little bit because neither of their playoff wins were, quote, great, but the key word in that sentence is wins, Yep. right? So, and they came from behind, which especially the Lions game. However they did it, you know, they shouldn't have gambled. To it. They did it. Yep. Right. So kudos to them. The Chiefs have gone the polar route. Okay, they went from the favorites, and I know them quite well. And usually Andy's Andy Reid's teams, or and most teams that go somewhere, are rolling around Thanksgiving or early December since the season goes longer. They, I think it was Christmas Day they lost to the Raiders. Yep. Mm-hmm. But it, it was like they had a – they kind of assumed that they were going to be them. We're going to score 40 points. Well, maybe 33, we drop a few, but we'll be all right. We better realize right now what we're not and what we are, but we're good enough to win with what we are. Yep. And that's to Andy, that's to Patrick Mahomes, that's to Steve Spagnuolo, that, that's to anybody you mentioned. Like they, I don't want to say swallow your pride because this was late in the year. Yeah. So the Chiefs did admit- – all right, I'll let you ask the next question. No, no, but you're right. No, but the Chiefs that made the Super Bowl are not the Chiefs you expected to make the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Correct. But having watched them win in Buffalo, and Miami was, you know, minus 15. They were going to win that, I think, right? But they still held them to seven, although I don't know how they were going to score a lot of points. In, in that, right, in that. right. But to win in Buffalo and to win at Baltimore with really, really – Low scoring, seventeen. You yeah, went on the road, a championship game where you've never gone. But they're at ease with who they are. But it took them to Christmas to go. We ain't going anywhere for like that. So it's just interesting the route that they've taken. Yeah, they are. I mean, we've made the analogy many times. I think everyone in media has, but it is the new age Patriots in that you have these seasons where it's like, ooh, because you know, even in the Patriots, like the the 07 season, they don't win the Super Bowl. That's the best team they, you know, ever had, 18 and 0, all that. But those years when it's like, oh, is Bill is Tom Brady too old? Is Bill Belichick lost in? Like they stumble a little early. And then it comes to December and January and they find a way. And that's what the Chiefs are doing. They're finding ways. So I here's my question though, because it's great because you have seen all this football. You are a football historian. If Patrick Mahomes wins his Super Bowl, where is he in terms of the Montana Brady? Because it feels like he's inching closer and closer at a very young age. He's already in that discussion, although he would be the first to tell you why well, I've won two. But I would love to – so to answer your question, he's this age's Brady or this generation or this decade's Brady, Montana, and then – you want to put in Johnny United, but he did you, – you, you, Yeah. Correct. He's already there because the potential. Is he 28? 28 years old. I still think of him as 22 and 23. I know. I met him. Um, there's something about him. See, it's funny. Now, I went out and interviewed him a couple weeks ago, and one of the things I, I told him, and this is how you know he's – I said, you know that Tom's early Super Bowls, when they won three out of four years, by the way, um, they were not the stars. Now – Tom Brady drives, end of game, Vinatieri, field goal, etc. But it was defense. So the Carolina game, with it, but 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 they were more defense in 01, 03, 04. Yeah. And running, especially in 04, they had Dylan. I said, do you know that that wasn't the high-flying Tom that you probably have watched? He goes, actually, I've studied those games, and I see how Tom was and then 
then obviously the, the 017 came, yeah. And Moss with 50, 25 touchdowns, whatever. Then at the last one they won was 13 to 3. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 3 3 circle. in the fourth quarter, I, th- I think. Yeah. I think it was tied with the Rams. So I bet the over in that game. He goes, uh, <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's why do we remember the ones? You remember the ones that are like so bad. bad so yeah. bad. But like like you, we were just talking Denver and Seattle. Yeah. Like, like we, we, had, we, remember, yeah. we never remember the ones that were, were geniuses. No. Nope, but anyway, never. back to that. He goes, and I've studied the way Tom altered his game several times. Like, this is, I wasn't fishing for that answer. Right. I just wanted to make the point that. I live those Patriots. They were a defensive team. With I mean, name name the players, right? And then the McGinnis and Teddy Bruschi and Big Ted Washington and Ty Law at the corner. We could go on and on and on. And, uh, Brave a little later on, and et cetera. He goes, I studied. I go, ah, oh, okay. So you've actually gone back and watched maybe 20 years ago Patriots to see how the GOAT, if you will, um, did it? Fascinating to me. Yeah. He gets That's it. great. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see how they've done it, and I feel like we watched that Ravens game last week, and everybody thought the same thing, which is why are you giving your running back six carries against the Chiefs defense? Why don't you run the ball down their throat? Um, I feel like, and going back to that Christmas Day game, I'm pretty sure that's how the Raiders beat them. I think they just ran the ball at them. I think they, they did. Just like you can't stop the run. I think that bodes well for the Niners and their ground game. Could Christian McCaffrey. I feel like the the creative stuff they do with the run game, like it's it's beautiful to watch Kyle Shanahan's system, isn't it? Like you watch him run the ball, and you're like, this is beautiful football. And I feel like that's what they're going to lean into. That's going to be their strength, and the the weakness of the Chiefs' defense, I think, is stopping the run. I mean, Chris Jones is great, but I think that's going to be the game plan. So that might that might be a good thing for your 49ers. No, can be. You know, Buffalo ran. For a while, and uh, but then Cook had a big first hit, right? I mean, he yep. had a pretty good mm-hmm. game in the playoffs. You're right about it being beautiful because anyone that thinks they can, okay, if Debo, which he is now, right, they're all healthy, right, that yeah. flow. But it's not, okay, this is kind of the plays they run. No, no, it's kind of, he he changes it up. And, and of course, Debo and McCaffrey, but especially Debo, but McCaffrey's unbelievable. I mean, he's he runs like a guy... Almost Derrick Henry size. Yeah. Does that makes sense? Yeah. I mean, not really, but so their yak with the running game, let alone in the passing game, is is formidable. The Chiefs, though, actually John Harbaugh gave me an interesting thought on because he good friends with Spags. They worked together at Philly. He had him in Baltimore for a little bit. They stay close. I mean, this group. I said, is there any tendency you can get on Spags' defense is before the game. He goes, he meant this as an ultimate compliment, which is going into your Shanahan comment, comment there. So, um, it's, he's a Rolodex approach. I went, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, there's so much in that Rolodex that if I start to, he didn't say this, start to, okay, so when it's third and eight, they always bring three guys. I'm making it up. No, it, there's not. And I think with Kyle... It's fascinating. It is yeah. beautiful to watch. I, I yeah. give you for that. It is. It is. It's they have all stars at so many places. Yeah, and, and they're all they're so physical too. You've got Debo and and watching Kittle block those two guys. They get incorporated in the run game and they they bring them in motion to give them head starts on blocks. Sometimes it's just it's beautiful to watch it develop. It's not that you know like you think of old school football. You run the ball. You run the ball up the middle, up the middle, up the middle. It it feels like a passing game in their rushing attack, like buried deep inside of it, and it just it's been awesome to watch. And I, I'm also rooting for Trent Williams to get a Super Bowl. I yeah. think he's a great player. He's been such a good player for such a long time. Yeah. I'd like to see him get. He was one. on all the reiterations of the Washington teams, right? Yeah, they called him. He probably was on the Boston Redskins uh, yeah, before probably. they moved, <laughs> right? Yeah. So do we? Who do we have nickname wise in this Super Bowl? Oh, you know. Well, the best is, and John Lynch loves this when I do it, it's for Debo. I mean, I've resurrected what I used to use for Lido Shepard. Okay. okay. But you, it's the Lido Shuffle by, by Boss Gags. Debo, whoa. I mean, <laughs> what, and, and if he takes it to the house, part of that song is one more for the road. Yep. Pardon my singing. Pardon my take. Pardon my singing. <laughs> so I, I used to use that. Remember Lito Shepard? Yeah. Yep. Back. I used, but I, I moved it up here. I like So that. of that, see, Mahomes, he's so good. I mean, when he first came in, I kind of used Mahomes is where my heart is. But, oh, but he's so good now that it's like you don't 
But this is important. Like, you see the hat I'm wearing right now. Someone says the the, the 49ers versus the Chargers Super Bowl, the first thing that comes to my mind, Natron means business. That's it. That's what, that's what I think of right away. You know right who away. else was on that team? Chargers. Yeah. Eric sleeping with the enemy. Yep, right, yeah. yep, yep. Like, that's it. You know, you think of the, 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 well, the classic games. It's like the, the nickname just pop in your head. I think those – well, now let's go back to my hosts. One of your most genius, if that's correctly phrased, and you know the backstory there, but your viewers and listeners don't know it. When you last year had, I want to brock and roll all night and purdy every day. Yeah. Genius. Everyone knows the song. You're not quoting some song. What what song is that? No, 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 no. We've all heard that. Yeah. Even whether you like Kiss or not. Um, and then. We were ready to go in the championship game, and of course, he got hurt right away, and forget it, right? Not his fault. I had it on my fastest three minutes. You guys mm-hmm. know this, because yeah. we called you. Yeah. I'm going to give you boys a big shout-out, a big viewership, Aaron Rodgers, who knew that carrying the flag was the highlight of the year, but, um, you know, the Jets opening up, blah, 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 Buffalo. And that was at halftime, but then when Aaron got hurt, I got cut. Yeah. Yes, I know. Even the fastest three minutes got cut. News where I get it. And then there were a couple of games that there was. I could only use a play or two in these things. And and then mid season, yep. I had Josh Krulowitz, our PRA's, call you and go, tune in. Yeah, it's on. So I give you guys, yeah, a big attaboy because that was genius. It was. I mean, it was an honor. It's like the, we we got I tagged in every single tweet. Like he did it. He did it. The ultimate compliment. Yeah. So yeah, that. Well, we were ready. It, three it made my time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Made my season. I didn't realize that. That's funny that you were ready to go opening night and oh, then yeah. Aaron Rodgers. No, oh. I don't. I I don't think Josh. Well, oh, I in, might not have because yeah. opening week. You know. Yeah. Oh my God. You know. Oh. That's so funny. Ah. Yeah, it, it's on a cutting room floor somewhere. Yeah, yeah I remember we, we, when we had our, our good friend Booger on, we were trying to get him to tell you to use that, trying to get you to like an Inception style, like, hey, mention this one to boom, mention this one to boom. And we were talking earlier about, about Booger and how your relationship has grown with him. Booger's a great co-host for you guys. He, he does a fantastic job, and it's not an easy job that you guys have to do. You were saying you have to just sit down, and then boom, he gets 20 seconds per highlight clip. It's like, give us something good that we can work with. But how, how has your relationship with him grown? Like, did you know day one, me and Booger, we can do this? Well, I, I had met him a little bit with Tampa, a little. Um, so I knew of him before he even became on our SEC network and everything, and then they put him – I was a fan of his when they put him in that impossible position, the Booger Mobile. Yeah, yeah. He had a smile, but it wasn't just like show. It was like he was seeing things, you know, where the old camera used to be when I was younger on the cart in the front and, and blocking the view of the fans. Like, he's come up with some good stuff, but he has no shot. Not nobody. John Madden wouldn't have had a shot, okay, mm-hmm. just to put it in perspective. So then when we – Resurrected primetime for ESPN Plus, which I think we talked about before, which was we can't do it on re- on regular TV. We can for the championship and 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 the Super Bowl, which we will right after the right after the trophy. Um, so don't go to sleep yet. Tune in nope. with us, but no, you guy, man. Yeah, yeah. If you don't ever sleep, but um, um, he uh, and Tommy, we, we got Tommy back. Tom Jackson is come on, yeah. Who's better Legend. than Tommy? Yeah. One of my best friends to this day. We talk every week or two, football and life and stuff. And that was a blast working with him. And But then he goes, boom, I, that's it. When I came back the one year, I'm done. And then who's going to do it? And a couple of recommendations in-house and very strongly recommended Booger. I said, my only question for him, not me, is... Is there a stigma to the public? And it'll probably go away quickly, but though the Booger Mobile, that means he's he doesn't know what he's talking about, which would be completely false, right. but a legitimate question to ask. I said, I'll put that into your park. No, we think he's great as this. I said, let's go, because he's upbeat. He loved football. Yep. He was good at it. Won two rings, which doesn't necessarily make you smarter than anyone else, but, but you he got knows it. what yeah, he yeah. thinks. With two different teams, played with Peyton his last year with yep. the Colts, you know, on that great Bucks defense with four Hall of Famers. Uh, from the defense. Thing. Yeah. Um, and we hit it off right away because he's not, 
He's not out to be, I don't want to say the star. Oh, I'm the star. That, that, I don't mean that. He's not out to, to say things, oh, everybody will see that. Yeah, right. It's not what that show it's genuine, is. Yeah. And he's got something. Sometimes I'm a little behind on highlights. I mean, nobody's perfect. He might have had a little 10 second thing that we were going to talk about, and, but I'm behind. I got to go to the next play. You don't sit there and sulk and go, well, that was the only chance to get in. The way Trent Williams is blocking, for example, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He, he's he got something no matter what I ask him. He's a joy. Tommy 2.0. Yeah. And it, helped, incredible. it helps that his name's Booger, too. Yeah. That's a good yeah. Like, you can't I, hate I, a guy I, named Booger. Boomer and Booger. Yeah. That's perfect. I mean, you just change one letter. It's not really that hard. Vanna White could do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, uh, by the way, Jake looked it up. Since uh, 2000, when Phil does not see his shadow, the favorites are 4-2. and two. Oh, against oh, so there's not very many. Yeah, not many. Games were in jail. Well, and also the not shadow. He usually sees his shadow. Oh, and he, wh- he when not he doesn't shadow, see shadow means you got winter. Yep. No, not no, shadow. You have means spring. Spring. So that's what happened this time. But you're four, four and two. two. So if you want to go with that, that? trend, wow. and he went and looked it up. He did a great job. Shout out Jake. So maybe we, maybe maybe it's the Niner. I've already I've already said I'm I'm done betting against Mahomes. I've I've lost four futures in the last two Welcome. years. It's over. The library. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't. It's like you get to a point It's like with Saban or Belichick, you, you you bet on a game and you have an outcome where it's like you win or lose. But when you bet on a game against Saban or Belichick, you can lose and also feel really stupid because you bet against Saban or Belichick. No, they didn't go 100%. But, but that's how you feel. Mm-hmm. And that's where Mahomes is now where it's like, okay, I'd rather lose with Mahomes than lose going against Mahomes. And everyone says, how do you not bet on Mahomes? Well, he's an underdog again. I know. I know a pointer or the two or as we speak. Yeah. Right? But they're actually, I've reminded myself, they were getting one or two last year, which was a great Super Bowl yep. Yep. with the Eagles. Yep. But they've been an underdog on the road to Buffalo and Baltimore. I mean, so here's the thing with him. To your point, I mean, when Tom Brady got the ball, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not just pointing to 28 to three, obviously. Right. I mean, a minute. You felt you had a chance, right? If you're unless you're down twenty-eight to three with two minutes to go, right. unlikely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't you feel good if you're on Mahomes and the game is good? Down ten, five minutes to go. Not necessarily feeling good because that means Niners are playing really good defense. How about down ten with eight minutes to go against the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl? That happened. Yeah. And yeah. Mahomes. Or how about <laughs> down? <laughs> like that literally thir- happened. How about down with thirteen seconds? To right. Go? Yeah. Right. So. Right. Not 10, yeah, but three. Yeah. And so three. you're watching – I'm not saying a Niner play is dumb because they have all-stars at every level. We went through the offense, didn't even mention Juszczyk or right. Ayuk. Yeah. Uh, or, thir- or third and Juwan. That's what they call him, Juwan Jennings. Third, yeah, they call him third and Juwan. See, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Juwan That's not mine. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. So – um. And by the way, Brock Purdy, he runs pretty good in case nobody yeah, knows. Yeah, not bad, right? Okay. Yeah. In case that's a little element. And then defensively, when I'm getting back to it, Nick Bosa's second half, I'm not saying where were you. I mean, he's double and triple. T- but but we didn't see him wreck a game like a T.J. Watt or like a, you know, Garrett did for two-thirds of the season with Cleveland, et cetera. I'm not knocking Nick but when is the, and we got it in the second half. Yeah. Now is that what you see in the Super Bowl? Yeah. Because when he's like that, and Armstead and, and Chase Young has not looked good there, but that, that's not to say in sixty minutes he, you know, there it's a four man rush. Not that nobody rushes four, but they always can rely. They don't have to bring because yeah. they get pressure of like five when it's four when they're like that. Yeah. Now, the Chiefs' offensive line is maybe the most underrated Agreed. in the playoffs. They've been playing great. Even though Tooney's out. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. like, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, the first time he got sacked in the playoffs was the second half against Baltimore. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they really are very underrated. And that is – it's it, the thing that I just can't, like, give the Chiefs enough credit because Mahomes is Mahomes. But the conscious decision they made when they're like, all right, Tyree Kill, you're going to go to Miami, and we're going to invest in the offensive line, and we're going to get young on the defense because – this guy, Mahomes, gives us a shot no matter who's catching balls. And those guys have gotten a lot better, but it's proven this year. They're in the Super Bowl, and what, what was the story all year? They got no wide receivers. Now you see Rasheed Rice. And like, they, that's how you build a team around a player like Mahomes. 
Well, yeah, they took it to the limit a little bit. But, you know, in watching them against Baltimore, by the way, Rice is now, and, of course, Flowers, so that they kind of – they had better offensive weapons than Baltimore did, certainly in the passing game. And you ne- yeah, they were dropping stuff left and right like it was – who can catch? Pacheco can catch on a screen. Little McKinnon, who's hurt, can catch screens. He's a good receiver. Yeah. But that's not your – until Rasheed Rice – well, he had a nice year all the way. But yeah. But came certain things. That's why Kelsey didn't get open for six weeks. I know. Yeah. But, but all of a sudden, if Rice is working, Kelsey can get open, even if they's hammered at the – you know, and he knows they've been doing it his whole career. So – they don't ha- and Scantling, Valdez well, Scantling caught yeah. a big ball at the Burner. end. He caught two of the week, and he's one of the more popular guys on the team. So they're they're like, yeah, the team was fired up for him. But that being said, um, so the one little curveball on the Niners sounds like I'm all this way. I'm not because that rush can negate a lot of things, and Warner and and Greenlaw are outstanding. Duh, I'll tell uh, you, and and <laughs> you know they're they're DBs. They had a lot of interceptions at the end of the year. Ward said a really former chief. But they, if you look stats, which yeah. sometimes. It doesn't mm, tell the whole story. No, yeah. never yeah. do. Um, you Teams have made hay here and there. I don't mean made hay with the secondary, but that's where they go. No, you're right. The, especially Green Bay. Green Bay kind of exploited them a little bit. Yeah. And that was a game that the good. Niners could have very easily lost. Um, but yeah, Ambry Thomas. Speci- is that his name? Ambry Thomas? Yeah, Ambry Thomas. Um, specifically him. He had He's had some very shaky games. Yeah. And so that makes me a little bit nervous. But I do feel like I, Andy Reid is in love with throwing the football. I don't think he's ever going to be a guy that hands the ball off, you know, 25, 30 times a game. But Pacheco's good enough, especially in playoff weather, where Reed thinks about it now, he's like, maybe, I, maybe they I did should give the Ravens game. I think yeah. it was like twenty, twenty-four. Maybe I should yeah. give Pacheco the ball a little bit more, which, oh. which I like for Mandy yeah. again, being able to adapt a little bit. Because if there's one guy I thought would never adapt to something like that, it would be Andy Reed. You know, like going back to the Brian Westbrook days and all that stuff. But it seems to me like they do have, they've got a running game that you have to account for, which is a little bit different for the Chiefs. Yeah. Well. But where did Andy, where was he? He was an offensive lineman. So even though he's a passing guru, and I call him the grandson of Bill Walsh, okay? Because mm-hmm. I, Bill Walsh was, to me, Bill Walsh, okay? Mike Holmgren is the direct descendant. We might have discussed this once. Direct descendant. Now, other people ran the West Coast, but you know what? Oh, ten of us are running the West Coast. Like, eh. Mike, Andy Reid was with Mike for those 10 years, almost 10 years in Green Bay, and, and kind of that's the direct line. So, yes, he's passing, but he also was an offensive lineman. So every he's gone back to his roots, and if he didn't this year late, I don't I don't think they'd be playing in this game. Yeah. Back to one thing on Chiefs <laughs> that I don't know the public has understood. Of course, you understand it. We're seeing whether they win or lose. Um I mean, we know what the numbers are, but but four out of five in the Super Bowl? Yeah. And D4 doesn't step over there. They would have been in that one. Yeah. Uh, in it, it, beating the Patriots, I mean, but he did. And so the only ones that have gone four and five years to appear, Buffalo, needless to say, right? Four yep. in a row. And, and, and New England, latter New England, 14, 16, 17, 18. So they were three and one in those. This doesn't happen. Especially no. now, when you're losing, we they had Tyree Kill. Yeah. Well, no, they don't. So, this is whether you want the Chiefs to win, not you guys to win or lose, or you wanted the Niners, whatever. Appreciate that this doesn't happen. And if we get a repeat champ, it's been 19 years. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm 68. Okay. Now before that it was once a decade, right? The Packers when they started the Super Bowl. And then then, uh, the Steelers twice, and then the Niners, which I lived. Um, Then, obviously, the Cowboys, and then the Patriots. Broncos. Broncos. My my bad. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah, so that was more often. I didn't mean to admit admit Elway at the end. That was unbelievable. (laughs) No, no. And they knocked out the Packers. The Broncos have been going through it the last five years. No, 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 no. My bad. Shanahan and McCaffrey on that. But then, but after, yeah, 03, 04. So it's 19 years. 
So if it doesn't happen this year, and whoever wins has a chance to repeat next year, I get it. 19 plus 68 is 87? Yeah. Yeah. I might it, not see another one. It's, it is, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing one. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. No, you're right, though. It is crazy to think that it would happen every every decade you'd get a repeat, and it's been a long time. Now, to the it's Niners' to credit, they've been in championship game. They've had a chance, to their credit, these same five years. Right. Right? And if Brock Purdy doesn't get hit, hurt, I think they probably that kill game. the Eagles. Yeah. Might have. Maybe yeah. not killed, I don't think but... you're getting a free cheesesteak in Philly. But now, our, our producer, Max, is a big Eagles fan, and he's not here today, but he, he is rooting very hard against the Niners because he doesn't want his NFC championship last year to be uh, negated. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous fandom thing. Like, he is – if he's the, from Philly, right? Yeah. yeah. And if well, the Niners, know, if the Niners yeah. win. I love them. I, I mean, yeah. Andy Reid was there, and I was tight. But Philly is uh, yeah, no, more crazy. than any fan base, and I say this with, with full applaud. Blinders on. Yeah. They're, they're I have the college best. guys on my dorm. Like, do you not know that there's a team other than the Flyers and the NHL? Yeah. It's in the 70s. No, they, you know. My God. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the best, though. It's what it is the best. so great. Like, uh, they, they are hyper-focused on their teams, and they they don't really tolerate you if you lose. Yeah. I mean, and, Nick Sirianni went to a Super Bowl, and they wanted him fired this year. Yeah. Yeah, very <laughs> it's like That was it. Right. And here's um, uh, TSA line leaving Phoenix last year. A couple Philly fans, hey, great game. Yeah, you're standing on line with perfect strangers for 45 minutes, so might as well. They know who I am. They're all at the game, right? I said, your quarterback played great. Mm-hmm. Just making conversations. Yeah, but that fumble. like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Was That's the, really... I, yes, the fumble. It was big, but just I, I was, he played great. Take a compliment. But it was like, <laughs> hey, he fumbled. I don't know. You know it was like, <laughs> have a good night. We're going to get back to Boomer in a second. Before we do, he's brought to you by Chevy. The Chevy Silverado has commanding and unstoppable grit. It's got legendary capability and dependability, too. We've all spent time, seat time, as they call it in the biz, behind the wheel of a Silverado. We're not just truck guys. We're Chevy truck guys. I'm a Chevy owner. I'm proud to say that I am. Love my Chevy. You know about the ZR2 family of trucks. They're lifted, ready for anything right from the factory. Now Silverado is taking it to the next level with even more Silverado truck tech, like available Super Cruise. Only Super Cruise lets you drive hands-free and tow hands-free on more than 400,000 miles of compatible roads. With over 138 million miles of hands-free driving by customers, Super Cruise will help you get to your adventure energized, and it will help drive you home. Go to Chevy.com, where you can check out Silverado, build your own Silverado online, and learn important details about Super Cruise. And now, here's more Chris Berman. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right, so this is 42. 42 straight Super Bowls? This is your 42nd Super Bowl? I started with the Niners' first one at, six, at Super Bowl 16. At okay. The Silver Dome. So, so that's 42. Yeah. I missed one at full leg cast once upon a time. Yeah. I okay. missed the Packers winning with right, Harvard. So 41. But, yeah. Yeah, 40, 41st Super Bowl. I mean, that's incredible just in itself. I, I'm lucky to be in that position. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> ESPN, I mean, like we discussed, who who knew? I mean... You guys started the show eight years ago. Yeah, we have a dream or a vision or this, and then we got some backing. And the, but yeah, now look, you have. You said we just pick up basketball, and and I walked on the court, and I thought I was in like an NBA court. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it. I have to pinch myself when now that you say that. I mean, yeah. I, I do think of it when I go. I still remember the first one, like, oh, my God, I'm at the Super Bowl. You know, you're a kid. I mean, it's, I'm really in my 20s. And the people that you've met, that you know, the game that we all in this show loves and those that listen and watch, they love, they get to go to that and, and really be down there and feel and touch it and interview the players and the coaches and the, make some observations that maybe are okay or just maybe like, whoa, be like a fan. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible because that's and and what you just described, I think, is why people are drawn to you and football and how you tell the game, because I think that that like boyhood wonder, if you lose it, that's the problem. Like I know myself and I think I'm speaking for PFT, like the fact that you're here right now, I want to pinch myself. And so like having that, though, 
be like, whoa, this is pretty pretty damn cool that we get to do this for a living. If you lose that, then you probably lose your fans. Well, you're acting. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably acting to continue, not you. Yeah. One's acting if they're con- if if your biggest calling card is a fan. Everyone's a fan who does sports. Bob Lee, totally different than me. Complete respect. But but you wouldn't say fan. He likes it, but he's report. But right. If you're a fan, like you guys obviously are, and you're still doing your shows, and you're you're kind of losing it a little. The fandom, it's going to seep through a little bit. Yeah. yeah, those are watching carefully. Not that they're looking for it. No, it's true. I I, I, I didn't go to sleep last night because Wisconsin uh, blew a seventeen point lead at Nebraska, and I said I'm going to sleep at ten o'clock. And then at eleven thirty, I was like, just kidding, I'm not asleep. I'm still mad. I still got it. I would actually say that I've gotten I've gotten to be a bigger fan since we started doing the show. Really? Because you pay attention more now. It's like okay, we, we watch every second of every game. Yeah, and it's actually just making us. I don't know. I, I that's the way that I feel. I, I do I too. Care I care more about it now. And and you feel it's also like people people ride with you. People you know give you shit when your team loses. So it's like the stakes have gotten higher for us at times. Yeah, it's like that's true. It's it really it used to suck to lose, but at least it's like all right, I'll just go to work the next day and not have to deal. With, <laughs> well, now it's like I lose. I have Nebraska basketball doing memes in my face, and I'm like, well, this hurts. And it, the, everyone just it, talking. That was shit. why you had hay out there. Yeah, right. It, it's also <laughs> like if you lose, I know that there's a lot of people, a lot of sickos that listen to the show that like to hear us when we're in pain. And granted, like that's that's what this is. Sometimes it's like, okay, you listen to this podcast. Sometimes hearing misery is more fun than than hearing joy if you're not experiencing that joy. And so now every time I have a chance to experience joy, it's like you get that me against the world mentality a little bit, where you're like, okay. All right, let's see if we can do this. And also, I'm thinking out loud here, but uh, the fact that now Dan Snyder is no longer the owner of the Commanders means that I can actually like full on invest in the team. So I think I I, I can definitely say that I'm way more of a fan now than I was eight years ago, and it's kind of cool. Yeah, well, because you're dialed. Yes, because the job makes you dialed in a little bit more, but you haven't lost the reason you dialed in in the first place. Right. Right. No, I'm look and to do it the other way. Look, I'm um, you're doing me a favor. Not that nobody knows who I. I don't get on TV so that people know who I am. I mean, if you do that, then again, that'll that won't work after a while. But you know, you're bringing different age group who well, they see me, but the fact that you you give me an attaboy, it, it, it's good for me too. So well, thank you. I, I would right. say I would say that you. And John Madden are probably the two biggest football influences of my life. You mentioned him earlier. Uh, did you? I assume that you got to hang out with him a fair. Uh, not hang, but we we were friendly, of course. Yeah, yeah. Not not because ABC is. It's not like I rode on the bus or anything like that. But I I he made it the most. He's a guy that coached and won Super Bowls and coached against the Knoll and Shula, and they think of the AFC in those days, and my God, um, uh, just the AFC, let, let alone, okay, now you're, you're, you're in the Super Bowl against Bud Grant or whatever. But to make it understandable to everybody, yeah. but to be a football coach, I mean, we're announcers. Okay, we're, we're speaking, we're not coming from looking at film at 11... PM looking for that one little thing and then trying to articulate it to people that aren't really football fans. Right. That's how great John was. And he just a, a basic guy. He yeah. never changed. I, I was lucky to know him. I didn't hang out with him so much, not because I didn't want to. But yeah. But was- yeah. I mean, wh- l- listen, I know that people are probably like, you guys are all just jerking each other off right now. What I, I wanted to go back to just a point about how, you know, having you on, you know, the younger audience, but. That to me is like a no brainer because you were our guy when we were growing up and hopefully someday when we're, you know, 68 years old, there's a new show that's like, oh, we want these guys on, these old guys on and, you know, we listen to you when you're growing up. So you're it's already, like, you're already sowing those seeds. No, but it's, 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 it's the truth, cool. you know, it's like you, like you were watching Countdown and watching, you know, it was just the best. Well, here's the thing on primetime, and then we'll get off because you said we're, we're doing this to each other. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to listen. <laughs> no, there might be a but, couple. But, okay, but yeah. Is, but the thing is. I'll listen back to it. Primetime, <laughs> for the younger, the real younger, you only got three games on TV on a Right, Saturday. right. I mean, I know that sounds Neanderthal. It's crazy. And there's no yellow line. I think yeah. about that all the By time. By the way, <laughs> with the Eagles, 
I thought nine yards they should have put a green line. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. good, good point. Yes. Well, the, 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 you know, the brotherly shove line. Yes. Because that's all that's they all have they to needed. get to. Yeah. Although, the Bucks got an it. aside, yeah. that summed up their season. They didn't get it against the Bucks. And they got tackled for a safety. Yeah, yep. and, and there you go. We're done. Yeah, That's it. but I didn't mean to. But the the um, the were what prime time. So Seattle forty eight, Arizona forty five, in in nine in two thousand, even the <clears throat> you know two thousand five. We don't see anything except when they cut in at halftime. We saw the one bomb to whoever was playing at the time. Well, here's five minutes. On prime time. So if you liked football, not because it was me, not because it was Tommy, I'd watch the show as long as it was well done, highlight wise, music. Well, you don't need the music, but it's fun. And the fact that maybe we added and made some football fans along the way, but there are 11 games you never saw. Yeah. So it was, now it's hard for anybody to understand that. And, and even, yeah, like 05, 06, I remember I, I had LaDainian Tomlinson on my fantasy team, won every <laughs> single game, and I'd be like, well, now I just want to watch and see all the. You know, I know he scored four touchdowns. Let me watch Boom tell show me the four touchdowns. Right, because the Chargers just relive weren't. it. Yeah, right. yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah, now it was it was fun. Here's another little bit of research that I stumbled on for this game. The guy, my Mark Franklin, has cut my swamis the last. Well, I don't do that anymore, but he, and he still cuts my fast of three minutes. Where you know, he's great. Does a great job. So we're walking out after we did the Pro Bowl. You know, it's on this week, and I did the great Pro Bowl plays of the year, but whatever. Um, he goes, you know, when we're talking about the election. I'm picking a side, you know, real quick. This is, you know, midnight or 11 o'clock Friday, uh, Sunday night. He goes, so we're going to, you know, the Chiefs Niners was the Super Bowl before the last Biden Trump. Yep, yep. This is not a Democratic or Republican conversation yeah. at all. Yeah. And Chiefs Niners is before the next one, presumed. Yeah. I'm an American history major. It doesn't make me an expert, but, oh. He goes, I wonder if there was anything else. And off the top of my head, I said, well, the only one that I can think of, champ, let's go championship games because Super Bowl, forget it. I knew right away, I said, FDR beat Adlai Stevenson. <laughs> not FDR, excuse me, Eisenhower yeah, yeah, beat Adlai yeah. Stevenson yeah. twice. Stevenson did not cover in either of those yeah. matches, okay? Yeah. Um, but that was 52 and 56. So I, the next morning, I looked up in my white book. I went, oh, in 1951 and 1955, not that this is like kind of minutia, but the L.A. Rams played the Cleveland Browns. Norm Van Brocklin against Otto Graham both times, or though Bob Waterfield started for the both at the L.A. Coliseum, eighty thousand people, so it wasn't like it. Eh. Yeah, they split. Now I don't know that that tells us anything about the election, the Super Bowl, but fifty-one and fifty-five, L.A. Rams, Cleveland Browns. This is, I mean, this is a bit of information. That I like it. Your show could use. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't predict anything, like the punks of Tony Phil. I don't know. It just took the time to look it up and it was fun. I like it. You know? yeah. Was there any other ones? No. That's and it. when you say when you looked it up in the white book, do you just have a book? NFL, it was the old NFL book. <laughs> so not the internet. Uh, you could do that just if I know where to go in the white book. I, yeah, yeah. I, I think it was even I like. I love it. Well, I needed the 50, so I was yeah. in my basement. I don't think I had. <laughs> I had the book from like five years ago. I love uh -huh. it. I love it. No, I know where to go. It takes, yeah. it takes a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's actually, it's got more, you don't have to scroll. And yeah, you got it right lay there. Lay the page out, you know. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Yeah, I think Wilbon puts it the right way. Getting some ink under your fingernails. Sometimes it's nice to do that, not have to go on your phone or online to do it. Uh, you are a, a historian of the game, obviously. You've seen a lot of football. You've been around a lot of big games. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you, uh, is Taylor Swift good for football? Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. Um because I'm a little oblivious to it. Not oblivious. I get it. I mean, and should the networks, you're not asking me, should they show her every time Travis Kelsey catches the ball? Not necessarily. First of all, I think I've never met her. Um, I think she's legitimate. I'm in my mid-30s. I'm cheering on my guy, and I'm having fun at the game. So if you just take it from that part, I think that's pretty, that's legitimate. I, I do. Maybe you guys don't think so. I think so. I don't think she's there to be, 
I mean, she fills a stadium of 80,000, so it's not, oh, I need to be seen again. Right. 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 I, I think anyone that thinks that's wrong. I, right. I don't know that. So, only this last week or two, my haircut, young lady at the bank, you know, uh, so who's your team? You know, I'm making conversation with you know, one, one lady there's the Steelers. I know she likes the Steelers, whatever. She's a young thing, 24. She goes, I never watched football until this year, but. I found I really like the game, but I am watching because I want to see if, with Taylor Swift. So, so I'll boil it this way, there, and, and you can go wherever you want with it. Yeah. So it was like I heard it twice in a day, getting a haircut and in a bank, and going anything that makes somebody a pro football fan from nothing can't be all bad. Yeah, that, that's fair to say. Throw the game. I mean, you may not agree. What do you guys think? No, well, yeah, I, I think, mean, you've talked about it. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think that we're we're getting more of a backlash to her, but it's because the Chiefs keep winning, and she's. If you're if you're a Ravens fan and you're watching the Chiefs and you're losing, you're gonna find something about that broadcast that you're gonna direct all your anger at, and you're gonna hate. Right? If that's Tony Romo, Tony Romo hates us. If it's the refs, the refs hate us. If it's a one commercial you don't like, be like, I, I can't stand this commercial. We've got actually a guy who's a he's a big Mets and Dolphins fan that works here, and he is an expert in that. He'll see he'll be watching a Mets game, and then uh, Buster Only will pop up, and he'll be like, Buster Only hates my team. Boom! Now that's the enemy that I can that I can turn <laughs> against. So the Chiefs keep beating all these teams, and there's more and more fan bases that have to watch the Chiefs beat their team, and then every time they score, there's Taylor Swift. So I think that's where more of the backlash is coming from. But, I mean, we're guys. We watch we watch football on TV, and you have to find something to complain about, right? Like, there's always something <laughs> that you have to – it's not my team's fault. It's right. this person's fault that it's happening. Yeah. Which I get. I get it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not fair to pin her like, well, she's doing it to put a kibosh on my team, obviously. I mean, that's – I get it. But I think it's – you're right. If the Chiefs were 8-9, and nine, well, you wouldn't be seeing her now anyway. Yeah, So true. Um, and I assume I have no idea that she's what in Tokyo Saturday. Yes, night? she's going to be flying Where's, all the way back, flying over. Because remember, that's like sixteen hours yep. ahead. Yep, they did the math. I think she gets to land at like noon on Super Bowl Sunday in Vegas. Yeah, and probably a plane you can sleep on. Yeah, yeah. probably. I would say she's not going <laughs> on Southwest. I don't think it's the Wright brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The plane. Yeah. And then what's her next show? Like Soul on Tuesday night? Like yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be fascinating. Yeah, which reminds me of not football. But my favorite times of flight like that, the start of the century, the last, you know, January 31st, 1999, Elton John does a concert in Sydney, I believe, 70,000. He flies to Honolulu, does another New Year's Eve concert in Aloha Stadium with another 50,000, two shows of the same night. But he flew to the two. That's, that's pretty, a good one. That's pretty good. cool. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I got a non-football question that just popped in my head. Do you still write checks? Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> when you say internet, you if I bank. can avoid it, I avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 20th century guy. Now, do you do it? In, and like, I'm a Taurus. You don't do it at the grocery store and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Okay, all right. No, no, no. That that would that would hold up the line. Yeah, right, right. I mean, be consist be considerate of. You know, especially if you only have like eight items. Yeah. Right? Like in that line, I'll like, oh, come on. But you're ripping checks still every now and then. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Pizza Guy. Yeah. You ever read Check to Pizza Guy? No, I no, I don't do those. I mean, we're check to pay my bills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. checks like, here you go. No. Old-fashioned stamp. No, I sit down. Oh. Yeah. Lick it. Stamps. Put it out. Hey, forever. You can make a good buck. Well, wow, now they went up again New Year's Day. What are they at now? I think if you bought the forevers, don't quote me. Could they be sixty eight cents now? Oh wow. wow, that's way more than. I mean, I yeah. probably had some. Of... So you have the forever stamps? Well, that's what you buy. You got yeah, you. yeah. So if you buy twenty books at a time, well, I don't say ten books at a time; they don't last that long. But if you bought them going out of business sale right before uh, New Year's Day, yeah, you save five cents a stamp or whatever. Yeah. It's a... Try to do that on the stock market. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like it. I, I, I'm happy. No, no, no. I pay checks. my bills that way. Yeah. I don't go to any store with a checkbook. But oh, you God. could. 
If you had, no, it. no, you always have a couple in your in your wallet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of oh, the your wallet. Things. One yeah, of the yeah. many, many, many. Your wallet actually is looking a little slim. Well, you know, I I, I'm, I realize you can't walk around it that yeah. way anymore. I was a little shocked because you you know you uh, shouldn't shock anyone. Boom, great tipper. He tipped the uh, oh. car service that brought him here, and he pulled out his wallet, and I was like, "Damn, your wallet looks like it went on a diet." Uh, it, it it's not. It did go on a diet. <laughs> it, 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 it needed to. You know? I mean, there's things flying out of there that, you know, cards from like 25 years ago. But that was a while. I, I weeded that out a while. Okay. Right. right checks, thinner wallet. Yeah. I'm catching on. It's only 2024. Yeah. We've only been a quarter of this century. Yep. No, I'll pre- catch on soon. Yeah. I, I appreciate that about you. You know, you, you know what you can do. You know what you, what you like to do. You know who you are and you're, you're going to, you're going to stick with it. And you're a Bills fan amongst other things. Yes. And, uh, this year was is this is painful for the Bills. Mm-hmm. You've seen a lot of Bills seasons, a lot of Bills heartache. Where would you put the end of this one up against you know the late eighties, early nineties, all the stuff they've been through? Well, they have an unbelievably resilient fan base because they've been well. There was a time they weren't very good, but they. I mean, I heard from several of them you know, texting right away, like. Well, we still got a believe. believe. Mm-hmm. Now, it wasn't the Super Bowl, but it was wide right, and I know Jim had to say it. On primetime, I even lowered my voice. I, I, I went, I, I, I just can't even say this. Wide right. Yeah. And, you know, and then they had asked me, you want us to show the Norwood? No, do not. No, we're not showing that. Yeah. Not right anyway. Um, yeah, because... Because they came on so, I mean, they, they six, no. and, another circuitous route, like yep. the Chiefs, six and six, but then they don't lose a game. Yeah. And they win the East. They look really good. The good news is for them. Yeah. So where does it rank? I mean, Super Bowls are the Super Bowls, but I mean, did that rank? It's always the Chiefs, right? That 13 second to bring it yeah. to the modern, yep. to the current era of them again. So the Chiefs, inadvertently to the Buffalo fan, have become the Patriots. Mm-hmm. The one or two times that they could beat Tom Brady in there, Fitzy beat him in 2011. There are people, like the campers are still in the parking lot on Tuesday, like people still drinking, <laughs> yeah. okay? It's like- I love it. It was, a, it was a, but so the Chiefs, not a division rival, but boy, they play, because now you're first place, so you're, you, well, you, you play all the time and then often in the playoffs. The fact that it was the Chiefs, again, twisted the knife a little more than, oh, we were wide right, I'm making it up, to the Ravens, okay? But you got the Super Bowls and you got 13 seconds, but this falls right behind. And it's, again, it can be another long winter up there. Yeah. Uh, and, and I feel for them because... As long as they have Josh Allen, they got a good shot. I know. The it, window it, is not closing on the Bills. I, I mean, it, it, that's that's foolish to say. Now, will they be able to keep who we think are a lot of their best players, Diggs or others? I, I don't know. But you guys know uh, top some players or bottom 10 players. Your roster changes a fourth to a third. Yeah. It no. just does. Yeah, the Bills no. are going to lose a lot of guys, but I think a lot of them are – they got some older guys that are leaving. They'll figure out a way. If You're right. If they have Josh, they're going to be in position to win big games. Yes. By the way, Scott Norwood from? From? Well, I forget. Go ahead. James Madison. That's right. I did. Yeah. There we Scotty's go. a friend. I mean, you know, and, and I know all those guys. It's, it's just – they'll get it's one tough. eventually, you think. Although you, hope. At the, you got Mahomes, I know Burrow. Now here's yeah. Jim Harbaugh in the. In the I Chargers. know. Not that that makes them. No, but he's it not is. playing quarterback. But they make him better. It, it, Herbert. If yeah. Josh Allen was in the NFC, he'd probably have been in a Super Bowl by now. I would think so. Yeah, and it's I just mean, it's the Niners are. Yeah, Philly had one year. You know, yeah, only one. One year. If you think about it, um, you know. And, the Rams, obviously, that was a great year. But it's still, it's just, it, it is a lot of circumstance of who you're in the conference with. Yeah, here's, yeah. I mean, the AFC, the best quarterbacks in football, well, aren't they all there? Yeah, they are. Right? I mean, yeah. Lamar, we can debate where you put him, but he's certainly capable of wrecking a game. Now, what the Chiefs and how they stopped him or how the Ravens didn't kind of stay the Ravens 
uh, I do have one theory on that one. And again, they were only down 10 and then 7. That's not, they weren't down all year. I know. That, that, that doesn't mean, oh, we can't possibly come back from 7 points. Of course. You have Lamar Jackson could run 50 yards. By the way, middle of the third quarter. Do you know he was still the second leading receiver on the team? The pass yeah. that he caught, yeah, yeah, second leading receiver. It's crazy, but they hadn't called. I'm not on Monk, and I'm not on anything. I don't know. They hadn't been in that position even ten and seven in the middle of the third quarter, which is not panic, right? It's not like it. it so they didn't. You can't do that and walk through. I think they led with four minutes to go, and or or didn't trail. Is that true? Yeah, no. Year? They 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 lost to the Colts in overtime. They lost that game against the Browns where they're up fourteen, I believe, in the fourth quarter, and they lost that game to the Steelers where they dropped every pass and they were up uh, in the second half. So yeah, you're right. That game pressure matters, and it, it, it actually goes back to the Niners where they had kind of had that as their bugaboo. Like, hey, they can they can kill you. They can step on your throat. But can they come back from behind? And then they've done it twice in the playoffs. Let me ask you guys one question. I'll get your opinion on it, as I'm not sure it's fair to even. The Niners were rolling. I know they lost the three, but then they they rolled. They you know they they crushed a lot of teams, starting with Jacksonville, et cetera. When the Ravens went out there again on Christmas, the same as the Chiefs' yeah. day, which is kind of an interesting. I don't think that's not to say they can't win the Super Bowl. They didn't. They haven't looked the same. I know they they crushed Washington after that, but eh, it's Washington. It's, yeah. Okay, I mean they had to have it. It was on the road. I get it. They haven't looked like that team we saw from the middle of November yeah. to. I'm not making that as a point. So therefore, they're not going to. Do you agree? I, I, it's not bad, but there's something not quite. I agree, but it might actually work in their benefit. You're right. Because it might be a situation where they got a little humbled and they know that, like, hey, we can get beat by anyone anytime. So, you know, the Packers game, the the Lions game. I now I if you if you tell me that they're down seventeen to Mahomes in the Super Bowl, I don't think they're coming back. That's a little different. But they might have a little bit more of a, hey, we can come back from these. We don't have to be, you know, just killing a team right away. Maybe. I don't know. That's, no, why, that's why they play the game. It's I, the best. I think it's been good for Kyle. It's been good for Kyle to see that he can do that because he had the reputation of not being able to play from behind. And now it's the narrative, I think, after winning two in a row in the playoffs that way. I feel like I feel like that's a little – I don't know if it's pressure off his back, but he has confidence to know that they could possibly come back. Right. And, right. the, and the players have lived it too. Correct. Yeah, because twice now. If you're yeah. steamrolling everybody, if we're if we're talking about the Niners that we saw earlier this year, where you know, like it's the second quarter and the other team is just physically giving up, if you're doing that and then you get behind in the Super Bowl, you're like, well, what the hell's going on? How do we do that? This? this isn't like this is not supposed to be happening to us. But now it's like, okay, we've been there. We can do it. I actually I agree with Big Cat. I think it might be a good thing because they still have all the talent that they had before. It's just. Okay, they're not they're not stomping everybody. That's not the worst thing sometimes. Yeah. No, you're right. It's going to be a tight game. Yeah. Uh, all right. Tough question. You know, you you mentioned 68. You've been doing this for a very long time. When your when your time does pass, you say I'm you know I'm I'm retiring officially. What what do you want the fans to remember Chris Berman for? Hmm. Very tough question. Well, spell my name correctly. We'll start with that. <laughs> uh, that I meaning the fan. I enjoyed getting my football or my sports from him and his station, not so much as me. That I mean, no one's going to really remember the first 10 years by that time, you know? Um, so when we were everyone's underdog, I mean, that was real. That was really cool, being yeah. an underdog. You know, who are these guys? And I, like Al Davis said, I love you because you're the underdog. You know, he told me that one. <laughs> Typical Al. I mean, it was like 82. Yeah, yeah the underdog. <laughs> like that. Like, oh, I never. That's pretty cool. I'd, li I'd like them to say, I really enjoyed watching football or baseball or, again, I enjoyed, I felt I was with a friend maybe watching a game or a show or prime time or name any other from with him and his station. I, I felt comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. Not so much, oh, he educated me. This, cause I, I mean, you know, people have forgotten more football than I'll ever know. I've seen a lot, but don't ask me what I had for breakfast. Right. Although Donnie cooked me a great lunch. Yes, he uh, did. So um, 
I, I think it's that simple. I, I did it. Did he come across as a good guy? I'd like to think so, but for the for the viewer, it's more important. Did we did we do what we were supposed to do? Did we do it? I don't want to say pure, but pretty purely, which is not a word. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a, that's a, I I think that encompasses it because any any deeper than that, I don't. I don't know that anybody would take the time to 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 get deeper than that. On well, I, it's pretty I, I, deep. Though. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's really as simple as did he make sports fun? And the answer is yes. And sports are supposed to be fun. And we've talked about this off air too. Like sports are supposed to be fun. That's that's what we try to always do here. That's what you always did. And it's like that's that's what we tune in for. We want to have fun, and we want to. It's an escape from everyone's everyone's going through shit in their life. We sit down on Sunday, we watch football, we kind of get a sk- escape from it, we enjoy it, and did they make it fun? And you did. Well, I hope so. I mean, that would be, that's how I'd like to be remembered. You know, I'd like our shows to be, our station to be remembered. I mean, you may, people may have an opinion of where we are and where we were and this, yeah, I'm not getting there. It, it just, yeah, I feel comfortable watching and made it fun. I, I probably should have come out with that. Yeah. I had a guy that does some serious surgery. This is like 15 years ago. Tell me, you know, what would you do is important on Sunday? I said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that was a great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. That was a great not quite, swamp not sound. quite whoop, but whoa, 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 Bob. I've known him. Our kids grew up together with Bob. He, I mean, he liver transplant. You know, I mean, that kind of stuff. No. Oh. What you do is really important. What we and he stopped me. He goes, "Yeah, okay, it is." But on Sunday, maybe I can put my head somewhere else, and I'm not the only one, and get out of that for even if it's six hours a week. Mm-hmm. And maybe it makes me do a better job on Monday for someone who needs it. I went, "Okay, now I'll allow that answer." Yeah. No, I mean you're right because I always feel when people give when people say that to us. I have the same reaction where I'm like, listen, we're we're idiots. We're talking about sports. We're not doing anything. But it means something to people. And you 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 have to like realize that and realize that it is important because people need that escape. I it's think, a great compliment to get. It, I always it always makes me feel so great when people should. say that. We're like, well, I'm going through a tough time. You guys talking about sports has helped me a little bit. And like that's the best feeling in the world when I get those. And you guys get like each one of these gets Maybe a million. I mean, at some point, it lives up there for perpetuity, right? Kind of like the stuff in yeah. my wallet, right? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I try not to think about a million people. Yeah. Well, they, I read that. that, that freak like, you yeah, out. Yeah. Like a million yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it fun, like, being in one because people go, do you ever get nervous going on TV? I went, well, I'm looking in a, if it's a studio show, I'm looking in a lens. I'm looking at not a particular person, but a friend of mine, nobody in particular, talk talk with them or, or to them not at them but we, we can't think of a million I don't, if no. i sat and thought there are a million people in that lens I, I probably would have cracked up long ago right yeah hank and i did a, a little bit of stand-up on wednesday of this week and did i think you? you know we're like 800 people how many people are there like, yeah it's yeah, like yeah like 600, 600 live audience live audience yeah. and that to me was way more difficult than than this this it's like i'm hanging out with my friends we're talking ball yeah, there happens to be a microphone here. I, I am aware that people listen to it and will will say things about that show later on. But seeing the people face to face, it's it's a different ball game. So mm-hmm. I can't I can't think about a million people listening to this show. Stand up comedy that's the toughest. Yeah, yeah Hank I mean, did a great job. He's yeah. so funny. That's oh, I know, but I, I wonder. And I played. You ask a comedian, supposing the audience is a rough one, or not like rough, like necessarily, but your first two or three jokes don't go anywhere. Yeah. And you already hear shuffling of the feet. Now what? Yeah. You fast forward to the guarantee, but then you got nothing at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what do you, I mean, yeah. there's a few that you know are going to work, but you're working to it. And, and I don't know that anyone had, I forget the exact answer. Yeah, you got to trust yourself in this and that, but to size up the room, what do you think they want to hear? I don't know. So what, what I'm saying is that's ultimate respect when you're, or live theater. Yeah. yeah. Now, again, that's not a stand-up comedy, but, oh, God, I forgot my line. Yeah, yeah. Well, I total respect for that. Yeah. Going back to what we were talking about earlier about how, like, the small things in the routine matters to people sometimes. Um, 
I, I don't know. Are you a Warren Zevon fan? I think you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he had a great line. I think this is when he had mesothelioma, and he was on David Letterman's show, and he said the, the thing that has come into perspective for him at this point is enjoy every sandwich. Like the small stuff. Like really dive in and, and let yourself enjoy the small parts of your routine in life. And that's that's what's going to be important to you. And whatever that is, like that's that's great. So I, I think about that sometimes. If if the mundane tasks every day are like, okay, I'm just going through the motions about something. No, like enjoy every single small part small part. Enjoy every sandwich. So I think no, I, about that all the time. Very good. No, he Werewolves of London. I mean say no yeah. more. Matt yeah. Blunden was werewolves of Blunden. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, so boom, this has been incredible. My last question, rowback question, rhoback.com. Use promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, best golf stuff. Rowback.com, rowback.com, promo code TAKE, 20% off. Uh, give us the give us the Super Bowl score and make it a swami. No, no, okay. Weird well, Because this is I, – I coming in today because it's still as we tape it, it's like the week we're okay. I'm not operating on anybody this week. I, I I don't have, but I said I better come up with a score here. So I think I think the Chiefs repeat. Okay, twenty three twenty. Okay, that's well, that's not a swami. Let's let's fix that a little. Oh, you oh you want a I humorous twenty five twenty two? Oh no, oh, okay, oh okay, all right. But let me give you a reason. That's I I did pick a couple of three to two games. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. And I did have a seventy five seventy two score once. <laughs> I mean, I okay. remember the, the oh, so twenty three twenty is what you'll probably read if I ever you know I have to write something for right ESPN. You know what happened? Yep. Um, the first time I ever realized what gambling was when I saw that little arrow pointed, I was like, why is that the team lost? Yeah. Why do they have the arrow? And See? I was like, oh, okay. Educating our youth. <laughs> yeah. Corrupting our youth. They covered the um, spread. Okay. Well, 25-22, but the, but the only reason – I'm not an over-under player at all. Yeah, I, yeah. I never have been. Although I was cognizant, but if I – was the score right? And that would be, what is it, like 47? Yeah, 47 and a half. So you can't do 25, 22, although you can. I never worried about that. That meant I had no opinion on that. Which yep. Sometimes you don't have an opinion. All right, so, so like, you want someone to win the Super Bowl square with some bizarre numbers. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I get it. Okay. Yes. So... <laughs> 22, 18, 18. Oh, yeah. oh I like I that. That's How do you 18. get to 18? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's six. You could kick a lot of field goals. Yeah. You could get to 18 if you if you two point yeah. conversions yeah. and a safety. If you go touchdown, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> 15 and three. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I could see a but, touchdown field goal, and then that team's behind, and they're behind yeah, by 14 points. points. They score a touchdown. They go for two. They get it. 18. Then they never get the ball back. Yeah, right. I like it. 22 18. 18. <laughs> That's better. I mean, at 23 20, it's the yeah. same ballpark. I mean, yeah. 22 and if the 18. Chiefs have them winning, although my Niner roots and my Niner fans will go, why? But I'm. it's Holmes, and I'd like to see a repeat champ, and I just hope people recognize what they're watching. Yeah. This is really, this is really, pre- these are the Patriots more like, I don't want to say more likable, it sounds stupid, but. To a lot of the folks. Yeah. Maybe that's part of the Taylor Swift question, right? Oh, I don't like the Chiefs. They're beating my team. But they're more likable is not is not fair to say because I love those teams. Yeah. I know them all. Um, but it, it, if you have a problem watching him play quarterback, you have a problem watching football. That's yeah. true. Oh, that's I mean, good th- point. By the way, you don't have to root for him. Yeah. But don't ah, – Appreciate great he does. Yeah. No, stop it. Yeah. So – now, you watch the Niners run their offense like they can. That's pretty cool, too. So, yeah. two classic franchises with Chiefs recently and the Niners all time. Um, 22-18, you got me out I of like my it. bed. I love it. I no, love I, it. I, it was a, it was yeah, a yeah. military yeah, yeah. job. Oh, by the way, I should go back to the original because there's a reason and you'll like this. Why I called you Le Grand Chat and you were Le Raconteur. Because mm-hmm. that's when Andres Galarraga played in Montreal. He was the big cat. And then here we are. We're looking at one and we're looking at the commenter. Well, Le Grand Chat, when he played for the Expos, that's what they called him. He did a home run. Oh, le circuit, le, le Grand Chat. You know, <laughs> and, and Le Raconteur is a storyteller. And the reason I bring up the French, because you guys are golf fans, we had a guy from France win last week at San Diego. Yep. And for football, Les Alouettes 
won the Grey Cup. Oh, yeah. wow. big upset! Big, big, <laughs> big upset of the Le Le Bomber Bleu. Uh, they beat Winnipeg, so it's a, it, it's fitting this year to yes. do a little merci to you guys uh, for having me in here. Quite a digs you got. Yeah, well, thank Appreciate you. It. It's our favorite tradition. Can you can you end us with a whoop? Yes, but I want to know who does the better whoop when you guys are back and forth. It depends I, I on what our vo- know, our voices are doing. Think? Yeah, it, sometimes one of us is hoarse, the other yeah. isn't. Yeah. You can tell. Uh, we've I've been working like, on the Raiders, though. We've been yeah. working trying to... Uh, yeah, you, you go way deep. Yeah. Raiders. You know what I mean? It's, can't do that. It's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, well, you guys accent it. <laughs> it would be the fastest three and a half minutes yeah. if we really yeah. did that every time. Yeah. But yeah. the... Uh, so at the the, the whoop, all right. Here we, I mean, we. I want to hear you guys do it back and forth. And then I'll give all you right. a couple. All right, we got it. Yeah, yeah. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> people, Not horse pe- today. People, uh, people will tweet us and be like, "Our dogs go crazy every time." <laughs> well, then here they come running. Right? <laughs> yeah. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Kudos to Curly on the Three Stooges. Yeah, where it came from. Yes. Yes. that's a good one. All right, Schwam. Thank you so much. We Great. love having Happy you. Happy Super Bowl, everybody. Happy Super Bowl. Thanks, Ron. Chris Berman is brought to you by Quest Nutrition. Quest was founded in 2010 with the goal of hacking one problem to create a high protein bar that wasn't packed with net carbs and actually tasted good. The first Quest bar was hand rolled in the kitchen. Now, Quest has over 65 products ranging from bars to chips to candies. Quest is constantly searching for new ways to make your fave foods questified. From bars to chips to cookies and candy, Quest continues to make protein-forward foods that aren't packed with net carbs and sugar but are always packed with taste. It's athlete-worthy nutrition, but these snacks aren't just for athletes, so even we can snack deliciously while still getting our macros in. The snacks are for everyone because they satisfy your cravings while still helping you stay on your quest. Quest supports you on your quest, delivering great-tasting food that you can make part of your daily workout or daily life. I love the chips. The Quest chips are incredible. They've got nacho cheese chips, They've got spicy chili chips. They're actually delicious, and they're good for you, and they've got protein in them. Perfect snacks. I had some of the uh, the peanut butter chocolate cups today. Amazing. You, you can't tell the difference between them and candy. That's how good they are, and they're good for you. So check Quest out, for, and you can fuel every adventure with a tasty snack or two or three from Quest Nutrition. Okay, we're wrapping up the show. We just came from... An evening of Henry Lockwood with a side of memes. It was something. It was definitely it was a night. Something. It was something. It was an evening. Hank, hey. I, I, I thought you nailed it. Memes, you were terrible. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's that's fair. So me- <laughs> memes. I saw memes today uh, at the content house. He was sitting at the bar and he had his laptop open, mm. and he was uh, putting in his his first bit of prep for the show tonight. And I think your strategy was to just hope that the world ended before today <laughs> happened. Is that am I far off? Yeah. Maybe the plane crashes on the way here. Yeah. <laughs> different couple different scenarios. But I, I was just I was doing from the from the get go. I was supposed to say presented by Quest and Coors Light. Didn't say that. <laughs> oh, I, had, no. I, I had five minutes of jokes prep. That didn't that didn't work out. So yeah, someone said, I think Max said that you were planning on uh, doing tequila, the song, only when you hit like a speed bump as and like you a fail safe, <laughs> yeah, and it was one joke, and it was like hit the music, <laughs> you did it hit, so fast. Hit, hit it right now, and it was just it was all downhill. I'm proud of you though. I like as Not bad easy. as it was. I'm proud of you. Well, it, you made it look pretty easy. It, no, yeah, Hank, Hanks was great. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to get up there and do that. I'll give you that. I, I would have liked to see more than like six hours of no, prep. <laughs> yes, but even if I prepped a year. You can't you can't teach public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> there there were some times and you read uh, some transcripts of the interviews that we've done. Actually, the first thing you did, you said, "Here's an unaired part of my take interview." Actually, it just aired previously, and you you read the transcript of the text messages from Diana Rossini regarding yeah. Max on a plane, and uh, and everyone was like, "Wait, I just heard I, this today." I turned to PFT. I go, "What the fuck is he doing?" <laughs> yeah, that was relevant. I thought it would be funny. <laughs> I saw one person laughing. Okay. Two sodas. Two, two sodas. sodas. Two, yeah. I mean, two sodas killed. <laughs> two sodas always kills. The man had two sodas. I knew it was bad. My dad texted me after. He just said, you okay? 
I was like, I'm, I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, the thing about memes is like he he just denied that tonight was ever going to happen, and then he stepped up on stage and he was like, oh fuck. And then he left the stage. He's like, well, thank God that's over. And just yeah. turned the page on it. Yeah, you, you actually yeah. are in great spirits right now. No, this is a good story. Just being like, remember when you fucking bombed? <laughs> and then we move on. I, yeah. I told Big Cat during your set, I was like, I think we should make memes do this again. <laughs> 15 minutes well, at a comedy club. Me- memes, I'm proud of you. Uh, it was bad, but was I'm so proud bad. of you. It's an uh, understatement. If you want to go watch it. Yeah. It was and, bad. And we love you. And you also, in a weird way, you set up Hank very well. Because it was like, yeah. is this going to be the worst thing that anyone has ever purchased? And Hank was good. Hank saved the day. Yeah. yeah. Hank, you were great. I thought you were... I was... People were like saying like, oh, the Barstool employees are trying to gas Hank up. Like, I was laughing yeah. throughout the whole thing. Yeah. I, it was an interesting strategy right off the bat to be like, who here is from Vegas? And then people in the crowd cheer and you're like, fuck you. And yeah. then, like, five seconds later, you're like, why aren't you laughing? Yeah, why is this crowd so dead? <laughs> but the, the intro was incredible. That was, yeah. like, a 10-minute video. The, you, there was a shout-out counter going on. I think you had, like, 15 shout-outs in the first five minutes. Give it up. You Give were, it up. I mean, you were, like, the holding the breath, the Coors Light, giving out Coors Light to everyone. Like, you were a master of, of running the clock. Yeah, I think people, I mean, if you listen to this podcast, you've heard me talk for the last probably three or four weeks about how nervous I was for the show. And like, I realized I was fucked and I knew that I couldn't do stand up for the whole time. So I was like, I I was spending my time thinking of how to kill time. So the intro was the easy one. It's like, all right, I can make a cool video. Corey, shout out to Corey. He's a great like video director. I was like, all right, we'll make a cool video to start it. Which, Give it up for Corey. If you watch like real stand ups like Dave Chappelle, like they always do like cool, yeah, s- cool intros. So I was like, all right, we can do a cool video to start it. That's four minutes off the bat. Give me shelter as a song choice. That's just such a hack. It's yeah, you yeah. put that under anything. It's like I've I'm always in. said when I went to film school, like I went to film school being like, if I ever make a movie, I'm gonna start it with Give Me Shelter. Like, and that's, <laughs> that's that's the that's the song. That's yeah. the song. And and the best part about it was you were doing stall tactics in your stall tactic <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah. Where you had like you ran back into your hotel room just to pick up what your AirPods. My passport, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I loved it. You were really just necessary. stalling inside the stall. But I, I spent because I knew it was sixty minutes was a long time. So I was like, I can't do sixty minutes. I was like, I got to do. In my head, I was like, I got to do thirty minutes that I can talk about, and then try and think of thirty minutes of killing time. So the give it up four was another big one. I was like, yeah. Let me just try and kill like twenty minutes with give it up. That was my when it started in January. I was like. I got to think of 20 minutes of give it up for. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's just give it up for, let's give it up for, let's give it up for, let's give it up for. Uh, I'm so happy it's over. That's that's really. I You legitimately, like, there was, yeah, there was a couple moments where it was like the crowd wasn't giving you much, but you also finished so strong. Like, mm-hmm. your last story was great. Your, uh, when, when Corey made you do push-ups and you were, you know, throwing out quest bags. Like, you, it was funny. I thought it was fucking great. Walk me through where you were mentally, like what your emotions were like from the time you stepped on stage, your relationship with the audience and how you felt about how it was going. So last week, PFT, obviously you, you were there. We did a show at laugh factory and, and before the show, Nick Tarani like helped. He, I was nervous. You guys, I talked about it on the podcast over and over and over again, where I was like, I'm, I'm shitting myself over this show. I talked about it like three different times. And I saw Nick in the office one day. I was like, I, he's like, how, what's up? I was like, I'm, I'm shitting myself. I have to do this fucking 60 minute show. He's like, all right, let's, let's meet before we'll go over it. I went over my material and he helped me. He gave me some suggestions. He was like, what if you said this? What if you said that? Like basically punched up my material before the show last week. And then when I did the show last week, I had what I thought was 15 minutes prepared. I did 20 minutes. And I had more left in the tank. So after that, I didn't want to. I didn't want to jinx it because you guys were like, "You did really good. You did really good." I didn't want to jinx it, but I knew after that show last week, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna be fine. Like I'm gonna mm-hmm. be good." I did 20 minutes. The crowd liked it. It was a home crowd, so it was like obviously PMT fans. So that helped. The crowd tonight was not PMT fans. Like they were not really laughing. Like they no, were they were. Dead. They were. They were a little bit dead. I think they were kind of expecting you to bomb so badly that it was like gonna be cringeworthy, and you you were in that. 
I feel like your whole set, like the beginning of your set was in that like gray zone where it's like there was some things landing, some things not. Then you picked up steam and I think they came alive towards the end. Yeah, but I was I was I had felt the laugh factory crowd, so I was like, yeah. All right, this is I'm ready for some laughs and when they weren't giving it to me, I was I was just kinda going at them. Like my I was defensive, which you guys know is how I usually am. Lashing like, out. I was, yeah, I, was, yeah. I, was I was lashing out, so that was like my, my normal reaction was just like lashing out at the crowd. But I had I had material ready, so I was I was prepared. I felt good. I felt bad. I will say this. I knew it was Max or memes and like the last I knew I was gonna be the last person. And I knew there was a week left where it was Max or memes. And I was like, it's gotta be memes. Like it's gotta be memes. Like because it was Max, I felt like he would have he would have at least put on a performance and like been good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when it was memes, I was a little bit relieved. Where I was like, but then I felt bad once he went on because I was like, this sucks. Like this is a miserable this is a miserable punishment. This is the worst punishment we've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 other thing that came out of this is I had no idea the Larry the Goldfish story. Yeah. So Hank told the story. Hank has a tattoo of Larry the Goldfish. It was from the beginning. I think we all agree a terrible tattoo. But I always just thought it was a terrible tattoo because it was a bad tattoo. You told the story that when the tattoo artist came to the office and you had him tattoo Larry the Goldfish on your leg, you got the actual dead Larry the Goldfish out of the red Solo Cup, R.A.P. Kobe Teeth, like you said uh, during the show. Uh, and he drew the dead goldfish on your on your body, and that's why it looks so bad. I had no idea. Because if you guys had known, you would have... Oh, roasted it forever. Yeah, I mean, I just always thought it was a tattoo of a dead goldfish's body. I didn't know it was a tattoo of a dead goldfish's dead body. Right, right. And like, not, you not could just have easily dead... just gotten a goldfish, but you were like, oh, you want to see what Larry looked like? Here's his dead corpse that's been frozen in a cup for three months. Well, he asked, that, he asked for a reference picture. Yeah. And I was like, well, I can get a reference picture. He's in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go take a picture. And it wasn't until the tattoo was done where I was like, and I, that's where, this is where I was like, I was too, it was too late. He had already done the full dead tattoo <laughs> on my body where I was like, oh my God, this is a dead tat. This is a dead goldfish. Yeah. yeah. And you, you guys were like, oh, you did. cartoon goldfish. Yeah, you guys, I could have just, I could have just shown him a picture of a goldfish. That's all I needed. It was, it was a fucking goldfish. It could have <laughs> just been, I could have just Googled goldfish <laughs> and it wouldn't have mattered. And that's why I never told you guys because I knew I would have never heard the end of it. No. And I was like, this is on my body. Yeah. yeah. So for years, literally years, this was 2017. And in the back of my head for legitimately 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, I was like, I got to get this fucking thing removed. Like, I hate, like, I have a dead goldfish on my leg. Like, I got to get it removed. And I finally have gone through the process of getting it removed. Unfortunately, it takes like 25 appointments to get it removed. So it's like half removed, but. I mean, it also, story. yeah. By and, this and summer, it will be gone. And you crushed because you were just like you wouldn't get JFK's blown out brains <laughs> on your face, on your uh, tattooed on your body. That's what I did. Yeah, it's like everyone has dead. That's that's everyone has dead people tattooed on them. They don't have the dead version of those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, Hank, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised. I thought you were good. Um, I did. I asked for the opinion of maybe the harshest critic in the world on this set. Frank the Tank, who was in attendance tonight. Piece of shit. And Frank the Tank, he Frank played, the Tank started playing crickets during me. Yeah. yeah. He's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I told him to stop. He's a piece of shit. Same. I, I, did. Like, I was like, you, stop I was like, Frank, doing the you cricket can't, sound. You can't. You can't. You, you can't, can't do that. Frank ne Frank needs to get up on stage. Actually, yeah. he'd probably kill it. Yeah, no, Frank would be amazing. Are you kidding me? Um, so I asked him after the show. I said, on the raw dog and scale, single, double, triple, home run, strikeout. He gave you a single. Oh, that's, that's good. What do you give me? Struck out looking like Vogelbach. That's <laughs> <laughs> what he said. <laughs> yeah, the crickets was harsh. And then he started biting his shirt. Memes thinking did, about the Mets. Memes, memes did get Dave to leave. Yeah. yeah. Dave Portnoy so, left the show. So, Memes, you've done a great job the last few years of uh, staying off Dave's radar. Now you are firmly on Dave's radar. And pay-per-views, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Yep, well, good spin. I mean, pay-per-views. Memes was... When Dave showed up, he was like, I can't believe he's here. I was like, who cares? Yeah. Well, I, I crush in the preset. But that, that, <laughs> the, the Dave thing showing up was like, uh, that, that was like, he was, I was like, I, I was, I wanted Dave to be there. I yeah. didn't care that Dave was I there. I saw him. I was like, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, people can still buy it. 
You could buy it till what? Super Bowl Sunday? February 11th. I think it was, I, like, I know that it was not, you know, Dave Chappelle or Louis C.K. I thought it was very funny. Like, it was, a, it was a good night. It was a great punishment. I think maybe next year for our punishment we do... Uh, loser has to get like a 90 minute massage mm -hmm. spa day something like that whatever yeah. we do has to be whatever yeah. we do has to be i i have i've spent a month thinking about this I whatever think maybe we, we send him to bali whatever yeah. we do has to be top to bottom it has to be the whole podcast it can't yeah. be split into tiers you know well, that's like, i mean because that was bullshit you. where it was like me but, big cat and pft in one tier which is not a fair tiering for myself Oh, and we then were just picking games. Think if memes had to do six. If I had to do an hour? Oh my god! I would no, I'm myself. saying that's, that's <laughs> exactly you guys would, we why would we never did that. we would never do that. So yeah. it's like we have to do something that's equal. All right, yeah, you're right. Board. No, because like you speaking. keep saying we don't have to do punishments, and I had to remind you that like I have to eat six pancakes. Soon. I have to eat 24. I got to eat 12. <laughs> so it would have been PFT and Hank. PFT got second place if we did the. Oh, top to bottom. They I was second worst. Was no, you were second place because we always do second and last. Yeah, but we never would have done. Yeah. We would never would have put Jake, Max, and memes up. Yeah, yeah, no, minutes. you're right. You're right. I All think right. that the winner next year should I get a, uh, a yeah. golf vacation. I think <laughs> I, that would be nice. Listen, I, I know that it sucked for you guys. I think it was a very funny punishment and like a storyline throughout the football season. We'll come up with something else. Yeah, and Hank, you were, you were a good storyteller tonight. Thank you. The storytelling was good, and you told a lot of interesting things I think people hadn't heard about. When I saw the picture of Russillo pop up, <laughs> I knew exactly where that was going. You were standing on business. Yeah. I walked at the airport. I walked at the elevator and, and PFT tried to kill me. The story The story goes that, that Bubba and Hank worked in concert together <laughs> behind the scenes uh, to do a Photoshop of a green screen shot that we did with Rosillo where they made me look like three inches shorter. <laughs> and that's the problem I had. If I you had made me like five inches shorter, six, I'd be fine. That'd be funny. But since it was three inches, that actually made me mad at the time. Because like Very people, mad. People think I'm 5'5 five five now. Oh, the guitar thing time. also like I obviously wasn't playing guitar. I don't. It was probably very obvious on the pay per view that I was fake playing guitar. But that I enjoyed learning guitar with PFT, but actually playing at the speed you need to play at to play a full song is very hard. I told yeah. you it's it's not an easy song for somebody that doesn't know music. But all. in my head I was like, all right, <laughs> I got a full it, month. I'm yeah, I'm gonna play the song. Bought the guitar. Learned you know simple simple strings and i was like oh and hank does get into the full story behind tiffany like yeah. some behind the scenes stuff that he has not shared on the podcast yeah yeah it was i'm um, um, i truly feel like i have a new lease on life i'm so happy it's <laughs> over i have i have never had anxiety like i've had the last month so is it yeah bender, we is it we, bender time we were talking the punishment actually turned out to be kind of a punishment on me and PFT. Yeah, no, you we had to deal with you. Yeah, you guys. There was, there yeah. was. It was probably two weeks ago where, like, I think it was a Sunday. I think it was it was AFC Championship or divisional round where, like, we were on the same page where I was miserable. You guys knew I was miserable, but you weren't going to ask me why I was miserable <laughs> because you knew why I was miserable. So we just didn't. Yeah, we, we had just, a dance going. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. didn't address. Yeah, it, it was. Like, it, we were on we the same punished. page where I was like, "This yeah. fucking sucks." Yeah. Like, I don't. I hate everything. <laughs> so yeah, now is it bender time? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And tune in to, if you want to buy the pay per views. Uh, you can get the origin story of Pardon My Take, which we won't tell on the podcast. Yeah. I was. It was very funny. I didn't know it. First yeah, that probably made you feel like you needed to call the cops. <laughs> no, not. I mean. <laughs> Yeah. No. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just statue. It, Jake was googling statue of limitations. It makes the story of me being with you guys even that much like crazy. Yeah, yeah. We still have to do that to you. <laughs> we should. Memes. Don't it's put over. you down on yourself. I I'm, mean, it, it like it's over. Don't. Yeah. All right. Good. Because like as bad as you think it was, it was way worse. I saw, I saw some people laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to watch the back memes? No. <laughs> that should be the punishment. Yeah, that should be. You should, yeah, we won't make you do stand up again, no. but you should have to sit down and watch no, the whole thing. No, just next year's football it. punishment is having to watch memes <laughs> no, 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 over no, and no, over. No, no, no. You can still buy it, four ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're kicking to ourselves in studio with the Schwam doing some lottery balls. Okay, that is our show. Great interview with the Schwam. Thank you, as always. Uh, and we're going to do numbers. So take a guess. Well, let's see. 18. 18. Okay. Okay. I'll go 71 again. <laughs> I'll go eight again. Okay. Oh, 40 for, for Hank. 
21 for Shane, 18 for Jake, Means. No, three. Boomer took oh, yeah, 18. 18. You can't do 18. I can't yeah. do 18. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take uh, 25. 25. Three. Right. Three, three, three for Memes. Here we go. Oh, oh no! Twenty-two! Oh no! Oh, boom. My God! Come on! Boom. <laughs> That's a come You're on! You're one off! <laughs> That's come on! Incredible! Man. If you listen to the show on Monday, you know why we're freaking out. Unbelievable! Oh, Should have stuck with twenty-two. No. Stuck with twenty-two. That's like Tony lining up offside. Oh, oh man! Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, man. Oh. The club. Oh. Hey, yeah, by the way, that sounds like the crowd noise. They pump in like when you're going to a, a Thursday practice of an NFL team mm -hmm. and they're going to go on the road. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a ball. Yeah, if it's going to rain, we dip all the balls in water too <laughs> and ready for it. Uh, oh. Love you guys.